Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. C-E-R-C, Voice of the People. Hello, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Roy Candy. <laughs> I'm Z Garcia. Hi. I was just <laughs> popping myself up. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sitting closest to you. I'm glad to know for the clarification. That's any kind of noises you hear from when I pumped up. Okay. Is, is <laughs> we are now in the top 30. That's right. <laughs> the top 30 Ooh. games of all time. I'm Tom Vassell. We, we said did that, that already. <laughs> Do we really? <laughs> yes. Do go we back, do this again? Go back to oh, getting pumped up. Hey, we gotta get, we gotta get pumped up again. Pumped up one time. Okay. Sorry, folks, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the studio <laughs> here. The good news is I got the people's choice stats all worked out. Okay. Ooh, so here's some interesting nice. information. Okay. From the top 30, there's only three brand new games from last year. Okay. And there's five that are new to 30, which means two of them were on the list last year but moved up to 30. Hmm. Okay. We started doing this nine years ago. This is the ninth People's Choice ones. Nine years ago, there was only five of those games in the People's Choice Top 30. Oh. Only five games on the People's Top 30 are still in the People's Top 30. Oh, wow. From wow. nine years ago. Yeah. That's pretty good. That is pretty good, actually. That's actually way higher than I expect. Really? I thought it's more would carry over. Nine years? Yeah. Surprise is five. <laughs> I expected maybe one or two. Okay. Really? Hmm. I feel like classics can hold on for a little bit longer. I than agree. That. In the top 30? Yeah. Have you been on BGG? <laughs> <laughs> no way. All uh, right. All right. Well, here we get going. We're going to be starting with 30. We're going to be going through these. And this time, we're going to get it done in one minute. Yeah, okay. I don't think if we read them as fast hour? as we could. No, that's not happening. How about like an hour 20? Can we try for an hour 20? No? Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> I was trying to get that. Let's just get started with number 30. My number 30 has a small drop from last year. It was 13 and 5 the year before that. However, they just announced a second edition of it, so maybe it will bring it back. I still really like the game. It's one of my favorite dudes on a map games, and that is Kemet. Uh, yeah. uh, Kemet is the quintessential, for me, dudes on a map. I like there's a lot of things I like about it. I love the board. Mm -hmm. The fact that I can hit anyone on the board. I don't have to worry about, oh, you take care of Z. Yeah, I'm yeah. not near him. No, I'll take care of you. I hate that <laughs> about this game. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, every space is two spaces right. from every other space. I hate that. Why? Hmm. Why have a board? Why is there a board? That's an extreme jump there to say, why is there a board? There's actually different things on the board. You're not two spaces from all them. The different there things. You are, that, I think so. No, not from the different monuments you need to control. I'm close to a lot of them, but not all of them. Aren't you two spaces away from everything in this no, game? No, you're three at the most, usually. But you're not. But the board still has a point. I can't just say I'm attacking you. There are actual still spaces on the board. I attack those spaces, and by moving to this, if I go attack you, I may not be able to get over to this spot easily because of Roy's in the way. To say the board has no point is a complete simplification of the board. I don't think I said it has no you point. Said I said why I don't is there like no, it. Why no, you said why is there a board? It feels underbaked, yes. I don't like the I just don't like the idea that the board is so balanced that everything is within the same distance just about as everything else. I normally wouldn't like that, but I played enough games where the map bottlenecked and one person just sat there and was like doo, 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 and no one can attack them. I hate yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. There is um, no turtling in this game at all. There is not. And also, I love the tech. The tech is my number one reason yeah, I like the yeah, game. Yeah. Oh, no, the tech is my number two. The main reason is I like you get to control giant monsters. This is a game that I'm actually pretty around. upset that I haven't played because I feel like I would no, really like this? this game. Everybody keeps telling me, oh, I thought for sure like this Kimmet. would be on his oh, list. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't played it, so it can't be on my list. This is. Unlike some of I can't think games. of a more Roy game. Yeah, it's a pretty... I don't particularly like this game. You still need to play it. <laughs> Somebody out there, find me at one of our Dice Tower conventions and teach me how to play this game. Please. I think... I'll go out and say he, you would like this better than Heroes. 
Oh, no nah. way. Nah. Nah. It is better. Mike's going to fight you. Disagree. Get him, Mike. Get him. Disagree. That's all right. We, we can agree to this. You can be wrong. No. It's okay. <laughs> we can't agree to anything. <laughs> I won't even agree to disagree with you. No. So, to be clear, it was an hour and a half for each pick. Is that what Okay, got it. Right. Number 30, come <laughs> Shut up, Mike. Go. Yeah. My number 30 is a game that was a crossover with uh, your uh, list from before. Well, I'm not still out talking to you. Okay, fair enough. Um, this is a game that would be high. Actually, for the same reason, it would be higher if I was able to play it more. It's hard to get it to the table, um, but I really like Arcadia Quest. I really, ah, really like okay, Arcadia you're Quest. <laughs> fair. Um, you know, the... The, all the different characters obviously have a huge part to play. It's a very simple game. There's very little strategy. It's basically run up and punch somebody, roll dice, punch somebody. But it's just, it's a gleeful game. To me, that's what this is, is that you, there are certain games where if people are attacking you, you feel like you're being personally attacked. In this game, it's just so silly. It's so ridiculous. You don't take it personally. That's all you're doing is running right. around punching people, taking their stuff, and running away. It's so silly and fun. Uh, I just wish I could play it more. And it takes a while to set it up and to tear it down, and that's a little bit of a drag. But just for straight gameplay, I really, really like Arcadia Quest a lot. I did not expect this to be on your list. Nice. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> I picked the wrong one. <laughs> huh? Cool. Well, my number 30... Okay. It's, nice it's cool, fine. <laughs> are awesome. Okay, I got you. I'll, I'm going to nail one of these. My list is actually a crossover with Mike from last time. Okay. And this is my favorite of the Tiny Epic games, ah. and that is Tiny Epic Quest. Mm -hmm. Once again, I really enjoy this because it this has like that space versus quest? Zelda theme on it. I guess so. And it uh, and it, it's like pressure luck, but you're trying to like put yourself in the right area. I like when you... Like somebody's trying to complete a temple, and there's a like mission to complete that temple, and you jump in there and like are able to get enough torches to get there faster than the other person. You really don't like other players sometimes. It's fun. It's fun <laughs> to press your luck and press it even further. That's not what you were saying happen. though. You were saying it's fun to steal stuff from other players. I mean, that's how you win the game. It's how fun. Does that, how does that make you feel, Roy? <laughs> Great when it works out, and then it's still fun when it doesn't work out. It's like ah, I almost got it, you know. Oh, the clipboard works well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, I, if you can't be a tiny epic punk, what's the point? <laughs> tiny yeah. epic, tiny epic punks. punks, right? That's what they should call their followers. Yeah. Brand new announcement here, folks. You heard it here first. Tiny epic punk. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Coming out. That's it. I will say it's interesting. You know, a lot of these series of games, people say, well, they're kind of split. Some people like one. Yeah, yeah. Quest and Space, Those are the by two. far the ones people, I that's consistently true. hear people say they galaxies like the best. Galaxies too, people like Galaxies also. Yeah, Shut like up, galaxies. that's what I meant when I said Galaxies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, the Space one, they've only got the one Space one, right? I guess. So far, Tiny Epic Space is what you have to keep the games in. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Touche, touche. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, that's why it's my number 30. All right, my uh, number 30 is a game called Rising 5 Runes of Astros. Woo! I like he this game. He doesn't around with his openings. Mm. And this is a co-op game that is app-assisted. If you want it to be, you don't need the app, but somebody has to run the game for you then. Uh, but the app integration here is fantastic. This is kind of mastermind meets, uh, I don't know, any co-op game you can think of. It's you're fighting monsters, you're rolling some dice, you're utilizing pe special abilities on the characters. They belong to no one. You have a cast of characters, yeah. and you can use whichever one you want on your turn as long as you have the cards to discard for that character. And then it all centers around this one fairly straightforward mastermind puzzle. Figure out which color combination you need out of a possibility of eight or something like that. It's really neat. It takes about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and the app will keep track of how much time you've been playing. So I know it's 30 minutes. Right. Between like 28 and 34 minutes. So predictably. It's mm -hmm. great. You know exactly how long it's going to take. And I, I really do enjoy this one. It's gorgeous. There's a couple of modules right in the box, which I enjoy as well, if you want to kick up the difficulty a little bit. This is actually one of the uh, co-ops which are kind of hard to find these days, that is very easy. Mm. This is an easy call. Yeah, you can it, normally it win this. But you can step that up if you want to. So yeah, Rising 5, Runes of Astros, my 30. Yeah, my favorite aspect is what you mentioned briefly, is that there are different powers, but you're not stuck being that one power the right. whole game. You're not the doctor the whole game. You right. can be any one of those characters. That's great. All right. People's Choice number 30 was also number 30 last year. Ooh, that's happened like three times. Yeah, that is three times, but hmm. it is Just the. Cheatering. Did you forget to like refresh, maybe? 
last mm. time this will happen, or the second last time it will happen. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's Star Wars Rebellion. Oh. Still very nice. high on people's lists. Uh, it, it was 30 last year, then 19, then 48. So I peaked two years ago. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, this one just said Star Wars. It's a board game that has a lot of Star Wars and it's not like a specific spot. We'll see where Outer Rim lands next year right. on the People's Choice, but I suspect it will not ever pass this no. one because Outer Rim is a very specific part of Star Wars. Right. While this is like entire movies. Tiny so. punks. Basically. <laughs> Tiny epic Star Wars. But that, that was already taken. Mm. It was? No. Because oh. no one wants that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, number 30 for the People's Choice. Star Wars Rebellion. Nice. All right. Number 29 for me is a classic game. Mm. There are five games on my in my top 30 that... Uh, um, were there 15 years ago. Okay. So this is one of the five. Actually, this is two of the five. Two of the no, two of the five are in this in this set here. Um, this one had a different name 15 years ago. Tiny Epic Garbage. And then they <laughs> they switched it over the name and they switched the size so that the puzzle size pieces could not fit together anymore, forcing you to buy the new version. And that's Pitch Car. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. Remember, Carabonde was the original yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, sure. And when Pitch Car came out, you couldn't, you could not, they were not compatible for whatever reason. Is 29 not Pitch Car? Nah, son. It is not. <laughs> oh, I'm, I got all confused there. I jumped way ahead on my list. Don't worry, Pitch Car is not coming. Nah. <laughs> I, was, I thought it might have been actually low for Pitch Car. El Grande is what I really meant. <laughs> well, look, those the are very similar games. <laughs> very similar. Same thing, though. They had the same issue yeah. when they reprinted right. Grandissimo. <laughs> right. The pieces didn't fit together. I remember that distinctly. Yeah. I can never flick into that tower. It drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't get around the track yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this was set. Nine, this was my number seven. That this is also ago. one, though, that has been around for it probably 15 years. Yeah. So no, the original version came out in 99, I want to say. No, 95. Let me rephrase. It won the spiel. It's been 96. on your list probably for 15 years. It is. That's why I jumped to the other one that's on my that's list for I that long. That's where the mistake came in. It's mm -hmm. not because you're not smart. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love El Grande. It's one of those games that... It does show its age a little bit, like, well, especially in how it looks. Yeah, and I guess. And Eagle Griffin made a nicer version, but they... Uh, was it Eagle Griffin or Real Grande? I'm getting confused who made the nicer... I think... Eagle knows? Griffin has never reprinted this. <laughs> Either way, someone reprinted it at some point. I know there was the 10th, then there was the 15th, and the 20th anniversary. Probably Real gotcha. Grande, yeah. Probably was mm -hmm. Real Grande. And the game never... It just it doesn't look appealing. The board doesn't look appealing. It's just cubes. But I really like it. It's it's so straightforward. You know, um, this is a game that still gets played. I mean, you still see this ton, game. I don't know. I, I, I see it get played. I mean, I see people talking about it still. I don't think this is a forgotten game by any means. I suspect you'd like it. Oh, I do. it's not on my list. But, you know, I, I appreciate the design. I, I think it's still, you know, a very streamlined, uh, you know, area control game. But... Mm. The area control game, perhaps. I would, yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty far up there. I really like it. Still, mm. El Grande, my number twenty-nine. All right. Well, okay. my number twenty-nine is not pitch cars. They old, <laughs> and it is not uh, streamlined. It is big, and I'm going to use the word garish again. I used garish mm. when I was talking about a different game. This is also garish, and it is one of my favorite mechanisms, which is pitching. Uh, Pitch car, see? Yeah! <laughs> Pitch car has ruined Are everything. Are you happy now? In your brain. That's right. Messing your cables up. <laughs> I really like Pitch and Deliver. Uh, pick Up and Deliver, I was trying to say, which is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Oh, Whoa, nice. that's pretty high. This is a game that I think confuses people because it looks much more convoluted than it is. Um, well, and, and, and again, that cover's not going to be for everybody. I tend to like. I just like this ridiculous, over-the-top Mad Max, you know, world that it's created. But the game is actually a pretty basic pick-up-and-deliver game where it looks like it should be heavy combat, and there really is very little combat involved. It's mostly fulfilling missions, picking up and delivering from one side of the map to the other, doing different, uh, you know, 
contract fulfillment type things. Uh, and it's, it just looks like this big sprawling thing on the table, but it's really not an intimidating game once you sit down to play it. Uh, if you like pick up and deliver and you're not off put by the theme, which I'm really not, you really should try this because this is another one I think has slid under the radar. Uh, it's a much better game than I think people would, would think just looking at the cover. I can just looking at that Z, the look on Z's face is probably 80% of people's opinion when they see it. They're like, eh. I love this look. Oh, you do? Oh my gosh, yeah. This no, you, is so my speed. Mm -hmm. I've just heard this game is really oh. long. That is oh. what I keep hearing. <sighs> this, I like Pick Up and Deliver. I okay. like this theme a lot. The crazier the better. Really? Mad Max, fantastic. Uh. Mm -hmm. But I've heard it's like a three hour long game. No, 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 no. It should not be a three hour long game. Um, uh, it, it's absolutely, depending upon the number of players, are, uh, we'll get that figured out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mac! I love My this time pick of year. is <laughs> called in, in English The Bridge, Wait, but the original <laughs> name is Le Bregeon. <laughs> <laughs> or you had the Cathedral expansion, which I really liked. That was one of my favorite expansions. It's modular. Uh -huh, you can uh -huh. choose to play with or without the water. Sure. Um, sure. And then also, of course, the reprint was set in the Caribbean. Oh, I, we figured out the problem. Have we? Yes. That, that's why you're having a problem. The computer's not plugged in. Uh, the right. Uh, right. Because that's what it's all about. Kids, Tabletop games. Right here. <laughs> we got a plug know, here. Are all about not playing with power. <laughs> Like Nintendo. Now, now you're playing with now power. Now you're playing with power. All right. Well, you should give it a shot to, to kind of bring it back in. I mean, it doesn't it – doesn't, I've never played a three-hour game of Wasteland Express. Never. It's been two hours pretty consistently with a three- to four-player game. Um, All right. It's worth, it, it's worth playing at least once. Even if you're frightened by the time, give it a shot. See what you think. I do uh, like – again, I like the theme quite a bit. Okay. I like the look. It's just every time I've seen it played. And then, you know what? You said it was underappreciated or mm -hmm. like you, you thought it was flying under the radar. I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, I think really? this game actually got a pretty, pretty decent amount of, of love and, and buzz when it was coming out. But every time I did see it played, and I did quite a bit, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was on the table for a while. Okay. Mm. okay. You know? Well, it does take a while to set up, even with those amazing game trays. It yeah. does take a while to set up and tear down. So, I don't know. Maybe if, you, if you're in the mood to play something a little longer, give it a shot. I would like to. Would we like just to. spent a lot of time talking about that game. I know. Well, it's because... <laughs> oh, yeah. We know we're vamping a little we bit. We are. We are. I know. But, you know, you keep... Go ahead and point that out. You want to do yours, Roy? <laughs> uh, Roy's going nuts over there. Yeah. <laughs> My number 29, pitch car. No, you just got to talk about yours with no pictures. Mm -hmm. you, we, we need you to draw, draw a picture for this in our minds. All right. My number 29 is a game that Z absolutely loves. I know he's all about this game. That is 100% sarcasm. He's oh. going to give me crap. Here we go. Tom likes this game. Galaxy Trucker. This is a game where you wow. build You love a Galaxy ship. Trucker this much? I really enjoy Galaxy Trucker. Ooh, I'm so sorry. You, you have a shipboard. Anymore. I still don't know how you don't like it. You it's build so all the ship pieces. I agree. You, you try to, like, everything's important. You want engines on your ship. You want places for there to be crew members on your ship, you want guns on your ship, you want shields on your ship, and then you're trying to like fly through space, pick up cubes, get points, and your ship just gets blasted to pieces sometimes, and it is, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And that sounds great. it's not my fault Z's so terrible at the game, but it's <laughs> That's okay. That's probably true. I, I really enjoy it. I've, I've played this game so much that a lot of times when I teach it to people, I'll show them all the different stuff, and I'll give them extra time, and like I'll start the timer, and I'll be like, all right, you guys let me know when I can start building my ship. You guys go ahead and start. Oh, wow. That's kind of a jerk move. I know, but I played the game a lot. And then they're like, okay, cool. And then I'll start building and build my ship real quick and stuff, and then then we, we fly through, and it's Well, it's you're going to have to go put your password in the computer. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, Galaxy Trucker. It's awesome. I got right. you covered. Galaxy Trucker's amazing. <laughs> Do you like Galaxy Trucker a lot? Yeah, I really do. Wasn't it on my list? No, it wasn't, but it's... So you don't like it. It's, <laughs> it's not in your top 100. We've discussed this before. And you have, played, you have played it and you just don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. No, it's a total... Uh, well, for one thing, I don't like the uh, this uh, design philosophy that the designer has actually used in a few games where you... Are playing really only about fifty percent of the game, and the other fifty percent you're watching. Wait, I walk watching. away for two seconds, and then you're crapping on the game I picked. <sighs> no, we were still talking about. I it. I was defending it. 
So I don't like that. I don't like that you're doing something and then you sit there for the other half of the game and watch things happen. Mm -hmm. You still make choices of like which planet you're going to to pick up cubes and whether you're spending batteries to, to trigger extra engines to go faster or blast big asteroids out of the way. Okay. It's, um, it's a crazy real-time game. Yeah, I don't like real-time games either. either. That's yeah. part of it. It's, yeah. it's just very chaotic. It's just, I don't mind chaotic games as long as they have like two rules. Right. And I don't mind complex games as long as they are dumb. This feels like it, all the concepts don't go together. It's real time, but it's really complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not super like, simple. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, and it punishes, you, it punishes you for messing up the rules because if you build your ship wrong and the connections don't meet, part of your ship can just fall yeah. apart before the yeah, game. It's you like, know, I feel like that's true, but I don't understand how people build their ship wrong other than their first game. The second game, you it's not that hard. I don't think this game's grabbing, that complex. It's and going fast. Now, once you have the expansions, race. yes. I think it's pretty complex. I love it. There's a I lot like of the complexity. Hmm. Sure, but I got it down. I got it down. I can teach it to you. No, please don't. <laughs> I can. It's I'll fun. learn ya. Can you I go ahead and do mine, mm -hmm. I guess? I think, oh, look at that. We're up. I think we vamped enough this game. round. So you only have, you only down to 10 seconds for your game. Sorry. All right, no all problem. My number 29 Garbage. is Yamatai. I really like Yamatai. I think it's a game that, again, it's complex and it's long, but it's thinky. And it... it now I feel like I'm just fighting, uh, you know, fighting against your pick. <laughs> well, I shouldn't. Um, there's a lot going on in it, and yes, it's thinky and heady and abstracted in many ways. You're putting the colors together to get things that you can build, but it earns that depth because the game allows me to focus on this thing or that to really, you know, put all my eggs in this basket or spread them out and see if I can come out ahead. This is a little bit like uh, Five Tribes. Mm. This uh, in development, actually, this was a Five Tribes follow-up, and then they moved away from that. Um, and I do like that in this game. I like the uh, the Jins, the special characters. They're just helpers in this game. I like the way they function in this game quite a bit. Once you earn them, they just work for you by giving you a special ability. And while they're on the board, if you're not purchasing them, if if no one earns one or takes one, uh, you add money to it at the end of every round. So they start to get really juicy uh -huh. in the game. So some of the ones that perhaps no one's going for will be taken because a bunch of money's going to be sitting yeah. on it. Yeah. So really like this one. Yamatai, 29 for me. This was your 36 last hmm. year. Look at that. It's <laughs> moving on up. All righty. The People's Choice number 29 was 52 last year and 70 the year before that. This is fire. It is going Hot up. Lava Ooh. death. This is a Rosenberg, which consistently gets more popular. Is it, does it have pentominoes in it? It does. <laughs> is it about patching or quilting? No. Is it about, about it's Vikings? About feasting. Yeah, that is correct. For it's Odin. A feast for mm. Odin. Oh. Two ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, really. So it's interesting watching his games that he does, and yeah. some of his games uh, you'll read, like, for example, Orin Labor. Everyone's like, oh, it's a great game. But it doesn't ever crack the top right. 100. Yes. This one did and just keeps climbing. Now, I, it's got to peak somewhere. Maybe this is the year, yeah. right? But more and more people enjoy this game. And I think this is one of the ones that a lot of people put very high on their list. Yes. Not that a lot of people play it. This is one of the hardest teaches I yes. do. This is one of the, you know, I talk about Galaxy Truck and I say I have that down. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at teaching this game, but it is not easy. No. I have to work to teach uh, Feast for Odin because there's 60 worker placement right. spots on the board. And it is long, too. It is a long oh, game. And then people are like, what do I do? And you're like, well, fill your board. I'll just talk you through the game a little yeah. bit. You know, I'm just picking some spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, but when once you get it, it clicks. This is, uh, this is maybe like an 18xx for some people, right? Uh, or Food Chain Magnet. You get it, you get it. I guess it's just I don't I don't get it. Well, this doesn't sound like fun. This sounds like if I'm playing this with a bunch of other people at a table, I'm flexing my brain just to 
show you I can do it and I'm smarter than you. I don't think so, though. I think it's every game is a unique puzzle how you play that game. It's a very puzzly game for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it allows you to, to do some clever things. It allows you to feel clever. It's not necessarily I'm smarter than you. It's because you're all collectively kind of doing the same thing. It's all you're very much working on your own board. There's not a lot of interaction when there's 3,000 spots there. You're not blocking people too often. Yeah, so but, but it does happen. It does I'm like, happen. how did yeah, you yeah. go where I wanted right, to go? But right. then there's still, I'm like, oh, well, I'll pick one of the other 50 the other, spaces. Right. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So, yeah. I just don't know. At some point, enough has got to be enough. I think he stopped. This yeah. is the peak. Yeah, I don't know you can get much bigger than this. You can't feast more than this. <laughs> All right. I'm not even trying anymore. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> My number 28 has been on someone's list, at least the people's choice and possibly others. It was 37 for me last year, so it keeps going up, although it was 28 three years ago, so who knows. It's been on the list for six years. A game where you can lie or tell the truth, it does not matter. The first Dice Tower Essential, also the last Dice Tower, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Sheriff of Nottingham. Mm. Oh. I still really enjoy this game. I enjoyed it way back when it was called... Hun oh, what was it? Robinhood? It was across the border. Was yeah. the English title? I forget the name. The German title about yeah. sneaking oh. stuff across the Mexican border, mm -hmm. trying to get maracas across. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it, what's on the border? Oh no, it was in German. It wasn't in Spanish. Anyhow, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I can't remember it. And then they changed it to Robin Hood, and then it became Sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. I just really enjoy. It. I like the fact of the inner workings of the whole game. The fact that I can. There's. Every once in a while when I play, I'll say something to the effect of, all right, I'm the sheriff. This round, I'm going to everything through for eight bucks. Give me eight bucks, your bag's going through. And then people sit there and like, I don't know, I don't think he really means that. And I, and I almost always do mean that. Almost always? Well, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> got to leave a little window open there to sneak mm, out in case it's a problematic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, and then they give me eight, and there's always that person who's not sure. And I would totally put the correct thing in the bag and then give you eight and be like, don't open it. You said you wouldn't open it for eight. Don't open it for eight. And then you're like, Roy, I'm going to do it. That's you're good too far acting. Ahead. Yeah, that's real good acting. <laughs> and I'm like, boom. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I, love, I love being truthful and tricking the sheriff into opening the bag. It's fun. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you and your kid like getting in trouble? When you didn't do anything wrong, and then later on, I'd be like, I told you I was <laughs> in your face, <laughs> <laughs> mom, the whole time. In your face, mom. <laughs> I like to pay people to not open my bag when it's all good and it's what I said it was. That is fun. And there's a lot of yeah, game in it. Fun. Yeah, I really do that. enjoy this a lot. Mm -hmm. So, my number 28, Sheriff of Nottingham. My number 28 is a <laughs> gorgeous, awesome. gorgeous uh, Days of Wonder game that was sadly out of Heart print. Heart and for all, That's, it. It, was, that's that, it. it was out of print for a long time. It's being reprinted now by a different company. Um, oh, such a good pick. Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Mm. I cannot even think about this game until I see the new version. Yeah, but the you know what? The new version's looking good. It looks great, but the old version is incredible. You now know what I mean? garbage now. Wow, no, I mean, it's, it's a I can't even look at now. it. Ah, yeah, yeah. My eyes! No. On Kickstarter, that'd be nothing! I know. Well, that's the thing. But see, this game, it was polyominoes before polyominoes were cool. And that was just one small part that's of the game. That's how does right? it. That's right. <laughs> it's just, it was one small part of the game. The game box was, you know, part of, of the, the actual components, which was fun. I loved the corruption. I loved the little thing that if you had the most corruption, no matter what, you're out. You've lost the game. Yeah. That's great. And my favorite thing, why is this not done more? It's such a simple thing where you have this huge deck of market cards. You take half of them, you flip them upside down, face down. The other half is face up. You shuffle them together, and now that's your mixed deck of market cards. So you've got these rows of things that you're, you know, when you go to the market, you take a whole row. Some of those cards you can see face up, and it's not necessarily something you want, but there's four face down cards. There's right. got to be something good in there. I know I'm going to have to take that garbage, right. but there's got to be something good in there. Mm -hmm. That's such a smart mechanic. That is, that is so really cool mechanism. And why isn't that done more often in, in market-type games? Because it's OCD people. They're like, I can't do this. Oh, it's great. It's <laughs> so <laughs> great. It's very, very good in this game. It That's, really is. It's, there's a lot of little pieces yeah. of innovation in this game mm -hmm. that each one on its own might not blow your mind. Yeah. But you put them all together, yeah. and it's like, man, there's a lot of little clever moments. Yeah. 
it's just a really and then, like you slick roll those game. dice after you build, and if mm -hmm. you roll them all to have an onk, yep. now you have to bid. Now you have to have a blind to get bid. rid of corruption. Mm -hmm. It's like it's all these fun moments. Yeah, you have not played this, have you? No. It's really Dude, good. You would love this. It's like fast, kind of like Galaxy Trucker, but much, much different. <laughs> I was to much see what better. the line was going to be. I will come across the table <laughs> if I wasn't so tired. I mean, I cannot argue mm -hmm. it is different. Yeah. Now, this was really, really hard to get a hold of, <laughs> but right. now... Refute that argument. Right. <laughs> no, it's I, solid. I'm, I'm thrilled that hopefully people will be able to get a hold of this game again. I can't wait. It's Who so Who is good. reprinting it? I don't remember the... Mojito Games. Yeah. Ay, puta de lo mojito <laughs> in you. I really like the With idea Cleopatra. of the, the different cards face up and face so down. So smart. They actually did... That, there's a big change in the new one. Mm. There's a few. Yeah. But one of the big ones is that... Um, the costs for mm -hmm. the different things mm -hmm. is much simplified in the new one. Ah, Whereas okay. before you needed, you know, for one obelisk or yeah. whatever, you needed like specifically stone and wood right. and Three lapis, lapis and whatever. Lap yeah, yeah. Now it's just. The same kind of card or different? Oh, okay. That's smart. So you need three resources mm -hmm. that are different. Mm -hmm. They can be whatever. Or three of the same. Whatever they are. That's I'm good. betting my obelisk from paper mache. I don't think that's one of the resources <laughs> in the game. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't think they had paper mache. This one has really fallen crux. off my radar, but <laughs> I, I'm willing to. I want to get back into it with the new yeah, version. I'm super it so pumped. Much. It's, it's really good. Really Did they good. say when that's delivering? I this stopped year? reading Kickstarter. Up yeah. March. Yeah. Ooh. I just looked at it literally like a few days ago. Oh wow. Oh, you backed this one, didn't you? I did not. I didn't either. I'm kicking myself. Don't worry, we got okay, it. I have too. a copy. We got it coming. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've got the original, but man. Can I skip them? All right. No, my, no. That was my number twenty-eight. <laughs> Roy. All right. My number twenty-eight is a dexterity game. This is the highest dexterity game on my list. Please be pitch guy. <laughs> and I really enjoy this game. Um, Tell me it's always fun. It's from a company that is known for making kids games. I would probably say this is also a kids game. This is Rhino Hero slash Rhino Hero Super Battle. Uh, oh, oh yeah! Two games in one. Games. Okay, Rhino games. Hero Super Battle. If I had to pick. Ah, uh, you yeah, said yeah. two games already. <laughs> oh. If you have to be mobile with it. <laughs> Welcome to the Rhino. fold, Roy. <laughs> Rhino Hero. Man. But I, I really enjoy Rhino Hero and Rhino Hero Super Battle just because, like, the whole dexterity aspect and, like, building the tower and, like, everyone's holding their breath and you're putting the pieces on there. And I've just had a blast with this with my game group. There's no reason that the silly kids game should be so high mm. on my top 100 list. But Hi. I really Hi. enjoy... Hi. I really enjoy Rhino Hero and I've had a blast playing... Have you played the big game. one? Um, I did play the big one at the retreat, so was it, that was, was kind of fun. This is crazy because it's so tall; you can barely play it. Yes, they play it on a cruise ship every year, mm. and I'm always like, "Why that's, are you guys?" And you crazy. see, it's like, <laughs> it is fun. That's awesome. I played this Catch game the is, on the cruise. This game is extremely yeah. good. The it, Super Battle one. The is. other one, I, I I might not have even played, but this is so good. It's mm. so smart to just take that idea of a house of cards, which we all did as kids, and basically turn it into a game. Yeah. You know? Oh, and I love the, the OCD fighting, people. Rolling. Like, you mm. must bend the cards. Yeah. Rolling the dice <laughs> against each other when you're on the same, same level, level and fighting. It's smart. You gotta move up or move mm -hmm. down. It's so neat. It's yeah. fun. Oh man, I just enjoy when it gets way up there and then it's like that one person puts it on there and it all falls and it's just, uh, it's a big deal and it's just such a silly, simple game, but mm. I've had a blast with it and that's why it's up so high. So it's that's a good Rhino one. Hero Super Battle. That's a good pick, man. That's good. All right, my number 28 is a brand new game to the list. I think Tom, I think it was you who said this was gonna be on my list. I think you did. Uh, this is Res Arcana. Oh, for mm. sure. I knew. This was uh, my number what? Oh, did you have it on your list? Yeah, it was on my list. Uh, much higher. 107. You can keep going. I'm not. Don't wait for me. No, I'm waiting. Find it. <laughs> 71. No. 71. Okay. Uh, I really like this. This is, again, doing a lot with very few components. I enjoy that. Engine building. I enjoy that. In this game, you are using a deck of eight cards and a few other components to put together a winning strategy. That is mind-blowing to me. And they came out with an expansion to it, which was great. A lot more, just basically more of the same kind of content. I'm okay with that in this game. Because, again, it's all about finding those little combinations. Well, this card makes me the uh, yellow resource, and then I can turn those over here into green and blue. Look at that. And then I can spend those with that to make victory points. That's, that's the idea. That sounds very dry. And I could see that being very dry. I don't even particularly like this theme. 
but the turn angst and tension in this game is superb. This is such a captivating game. Great at two, as you've said. Fantastic two-player game. But I have played with four players, and that's solid, too. I just really like this one. I may need to play it again. I don't know why this game fell flat for me. It just did. It didn't yeah. feel like... It, it, it felt like... Engine Builder 101. I mean, other than it's a smaller, you know, you have smaller right, cards right, right. you go. I don't know why. I, it, I'm guessing this is just me because everyone, this seems to get universal acclaim. It almost made my list. Honestly, the only reason it didn't is just because I haven't played it enough yet. Like, yeah. I need to play more. I want to play with the drafting and stuff like that as wow. well to see the game. I really enjoy. It's very subtle. Game. Maybe that's yeah. it. It is kind of a subtle game. Yeah. It doesn't, it does not point out to you combinations. Right. Right. And I am kind of dumb. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I don't want to say it like that, but <laughs> next time you play, I will sit there next to you and be like, listen, here's what you want to be doing. Right. Here's what you're actually doing. Fix that. So I, I, can, <laughs> look at, I can look at these cards? You I'm allowed look to look. at them, yes. All right, good. That may have been my problem. <laughs> So the much smarter people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if they pick Res Arcana also. That would be awesome. Now, their number 28 was 21 last year, 50 the year before that. So it's kind of settled in. And this is one that is on uh, other people's lists, I think. That doesn't matter. Champions of Midgard. Ah. Uh, you know, this game is, gets a lot of love, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it know does. that... People were very excited about Reavers of Midgard, and a lot of that came because of residuals sure. off champions. Yeah. This is a Lords of Water Deep-esque game, but with dice as workers rather than uh, actual workers themselves. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it myself quite a bit. That's why there's a Dice Tower Seal of Excellence on it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they came out with a couple expansions that were pretty widely enjoyed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and the big box version it did really well on Kickstarter, so... I enjoyed this one. It's a good one. I'm mm -hmm. glad I like Good job, people. Solid pick. I am with the people so far in this. Actually, I'm with the people all the way this Ooh, stuff. Talk about pandering. I Pandering to Tom the people. <laughs> and the people. Yeah, but let me clarify something. I am with the people. There's no confusion about who is what. <laughs> we know what's going on. The people are the up. people. Obviously. You I shouldn't finish that sentence. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not with that jacket you're wearing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number 27 is the second of the five games that's been on my list for 15 years. It's not Pitch Car. <laughs> <laughs> I may have jumped farther on the list. This is... All right, well, you know, we might sometimes conflate more than one game in the same category here. I don't even care, Tom. It's fine. <laughs> Put three games on here. My, this one has been in my top ten, was in my top ten for... Nine years. Now it's fallen to 27. No reason. I, just, I played this more than almost any other game on my list, and that's Ticket to Ride. Hmm. Uh, Ticket to Ride, uh, other than one lousy expansion no one remembers and one set I didn't enjoy much, I love all the maps. And in fact, next week I'll be doing a video ranking all the Ticket to Ride stuff. You're from, crazy. Ah, it can't be done. It, yeah, it can. It's not actually that <laughs> even that hard. Yeah, you're right. I guess you're right. Fine. Um, uh, but the idea of Ticket to Ride I like because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a rummy board game, yeah. and it works so well. And I'll still play it. Of all the gateway big games, Carcassonne I'll still play. Catan I've kind of cooled on. But this one I can still do. Yeah. I play it. I just this year they came out with the Alexa version, and mm. so I taught it to my kids oh, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, and I played some new maps this year, and I'm thinking I still like the base mechanism of this game, the yeah. hold cards, the idea that you, there's no hand limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I well, I won't even say which one of the ticket rides is my favorite. Say that for next week. But as a general whole, I like them. The one I played the most by far is the base map. Mm -hmm. Just. For various reasons. Old it's, girls, it's, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's not even that. I mean, you would think uh, you go back to a lot of these older, you know, different maps, but it's like base game, new map, base game, another new map, base game. And I'll go back to the other maps every once in a while, but I just keep going back to the base game. Yeah, sure. So, Ticket to Ride, my number 27. Nice. 
It's also hard to find people that have just a really negative reaction to that game. They might be lukewarm, but very few people say, I hate Ticket to Ride. All right, my number is 27. I guess if, uh, if I'm telling anything about myself in this list is that I like garish games. Or right. either that or your vocabulary is like very it. small. <laughs> well, because I can't, yeah, what's another good word for garish? It, it's a very specific word. It is a very specific description. Saturated, overly saturated Hey, Siri, game. what's a synonym for garish? Shut up, Siri didn't even listen to me that time. <laughs> I'm going to look it up now. Hang on, keep going. All right. This is a game I discussed when I was talking about the uh, People's Choice. This is Dinosaur Island. Yeah. Um, this is a game that surprised me with how much I enjoyed it. Um, I was taken by the theme. I wanted there to be a good... Jurassic, let's be honest. I wanted there to be a good Jurassic Park type game out there. Um, uh, it's not on the yeah, well, Jurassic J. It's not, but it is. Anyway, it's it's just a really well done game Ugh. that that I know, I know. A lot of people don't like. I love the look of it. I, I have no issues with the it at 80s all. The '80s were good to you, Mark. Yeah, huh? well, uh, yeah, those were my formative years. See. I can I can see it, <laughs> but as I mentioned, I don't want to belabor the point. But I just I really like how the components kind of help you through the 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 process of the game. It make, makes it much easier to teach than it would be otherwise. Um, it's relatively quick because there's a lot of the game is being played simultaneously. So, Dinosaur Island. I think it's a game that that does have some legs. Hmm. All right, here we go. Have some ha and wings Dino and yeah. Dotty, lurid. Yeah, but those are all negative. Lurid. Glaring, flashy, flashy. Showy, showy, vulgar. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Tasteless, <laughs> unattractive. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's outrageous. Sickly, people. Tacky. Just yeah. keep using garish. I like yeah, garish. Well, that's what garish means. Garish showy is good. I'll take showy. I'll take flashy. That's good. Flashy. It's showy. loud. It's loud. Maybe a little loud. Yeah. It's garish. Maybe yeah. A little loud. All right, my 27 is actually by the same designer as Z's last game, but this game is set in space. This is Race for the Galaxy. Oh, Snapple. Oh, 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 I feel you. Now, I, have you put... I, I've played with several of the expansions. I haven't played with all of them, but no, I really okay. enjoyed the base game. No, I really enjoy no, the way no the game worries plays. There. <laughs> I enjoyed the action system in this game. I enjoy all the different stuff. I mean, I told the story about how someone walked up away play, from playing this game, but I still really enjoy the way the game works and how quick it is. The iconography, of course, is hard to get into, but when you play it with people that know the game, it just flows so quick and it's just so fast and fun to play. And the combos you can build up and whether you're getting the resources on the planets and spending them for victory points or, or building up a huge military Thing. I gotta lots play of Roy in this now. And Two lots player. of different ways to do it. Because I feel like I'm really good at this game, and mm. Roy's pretty good at all games. So if I, I need to know if I can beat Roy. Maybe, mm. maybe. Go Just depends on how the feast for Odin and if you need to know if you're smarter <laughs> than someone else. <laughs> I didn't say I, I didn't. I didn't say that I was wondering if I was smarter than Roy. I was saying I was wondering if I could beat Roy at this game. It's not the same thing. It is not. I really enjoy the space <laughs> theme too. Oh well, come so. on. <laughs> Race for the Galaxy is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And that's why it's my number 27. I think it's the same thing. My number 27 is a game called Downforce. It's a racing oh, game. Nice. Uh, brought out by Restoration based on an older uh, Kramer design. This has actually been reprinted a ton of times mm. you know, under various names. And I really enjoy it. It's a fast paced game, it's card driven. So there's no rolling dice in this. The, the turns go quite quickly. You have every card you will have for the whole game in your hand at the beginning of the turn. So yes, you can look ahead. You can plan, try to figure out how you want to tackle the whole thing. And it's ultimately all about manipulating your hand of cards to avoid or create bottlenecks and bidding. Or, mm -hmm. or betting, I should say, not bidding. Uh, placing bets on who you think will win the, the game. As the race is in progress, you will place your bets. I enjoy it. Simple scoring, very straightforward. Yeah. A little, you know, there's an actual bidding at the beginning um, for ownership of the cars, mm -hmm. a special ability as well. This is such a clean design. Yeah. It is pleasant to play, even though the game has some tension in it, yeah. right? It's not that it's a sort of relaxing game, but it is very easy to play and, and a pleasant, enjoyable throwback kind of vibe to it that mm, I right. find uh, reassuring maybe. Mm. I like it. How many, how many people here more often than not bet on their own car? 
I always bet on my own car. No. But I, I, bet bet on one. I bet on Jason's Never. car. I've already, I've, That's uh, a good call. I've already mentioned that I have n- actually not ever g- crossed the finish line with my car. That's crazy. That's pretty rare, actually, I'm isn't it? This I am awful. Information, don't bet on Mike's <laughs> car ever. Now we know, right? Yeah. I go big or go home. I'm usually crushed in turn one. Maybe next time I'm going to make his car pass finish line. I might be like, I came in last place. And I'll say, but... But your car crossed the That's right. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Slow, I'll take slow steps. This is new to your list, people say. This is new, isn't it? It's like a year. This version. No, it could have been on your list last year. It's outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Gen Con two years ago, I think. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought this might have actually been on my list last time, but... Twasn't. Like All right. It. We just mentioned Feast for Odin. We did. Which is a... Uh, uh, a Rosenberg game, but what's interesting is this next game is the highest Rosenberg rated game, which is really weird because I know Agricola was mm. at the very top at one point. I think it's what you Caverna? guessed before. That's right, Caverna, oh, number 27. Okay. This was 24 last year and 29 the year before that. Look at that artwork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like his artwork <laughs> when it's small, like minuscule, like on like the piece stamp, of the game, like not visible, stamp size. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, like when you shrink. Like I look at the Caverna cards and the boards. I like his stuff. It's then they make it big and put you it in the box. You think he draws small and that's blown up? It very well could be. And then maybe that's what it is. I don't know. It's very possible he draws big and they shrink it down. Because you notice there is shading and everything. That'd be really hard to do small. You think maybe he draws all this in the dark with his eyes closed? You're a jerk today. <laughs> <laughs> What's going has on? A sly knowing look, doesn't he? Look at that he donkey. Look, he knows that something. Donkey that donkey knows something, knows something yeah. that went into right. that pot. <laughs> That's right. That nobody yeah. knows. There's a secret in that pot. You're going to find out. Yeah. It's donkey juice. Donkey You're always juice. talking about it. <laughs> I done spiked your punch with the donkey juice. <laughs> That's terrifyingly bad. Yeah. All right. Caverna. It's it's uh, <laughs> good choice, people. This Although is, this is a good this is a good yeah, like the solid. Rosenberg ruling Euro games. That period is over. Yeah, we've now sure. moved in other designers who will see too many as we get good designers there. that yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, you've you've yeah. I don't know. For maybe me, Rosenberg is ab- still at the top of his game. Maybe the abduction is wearing off. He definitely like after he did Bonanza and all those little silly card mm. games. Like I know, I've said before, was abducted, was abducted by aliens. <laughs> they dropped him off. He invented Agricola in one week. Did you know that? He made Agricola in a week. Is that what I you just heard? made that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me like I know something. Under the we were all believe. I, I was believing you. Uh, <laughs> and that's why you got to open my bag. Don't and share. believe Z. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh. No, I think you're right. It's wearing off his uh, his ability to dominate. <coughs> yeah, too many too many good people. Yep. All right, moving on. All right, my number twenty six is brand new to the list. Whoo! Although, yeah, it's pretty high for this entry too. <laughs> when I first played it, would not have gone this high. Okay. Um, but as time goes by, I enjoy it more and more. And that is a push your luck game. It's one of my favorite styles of games. Ah. Quacks of Quillingburg, which Ooh. suddenly showed up. Uh, <laughs> the quacks of quack and quack. Yeah. I really like this game the yeah. more I play it. Mm-hmm. And then an expansion came out this year, which I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. But without the expansion, still enjoy it. You know, if there's anything that adds half a point to this, it's, it's the board game geek. Yeah, the tokens, real nice. Which are oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's my one problem with the game is that those tokens, you are pulling them from the bag all the time. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And they're just, they wear out. They really do. Which makes me happy that the game gets played that much. There's just something about this push your luck aspect I like. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the things I like about it, and people were asking me about this compared to the uh, Teeth and uh, oh, Taverns of Teeth Taverns and, Taverns and Thaw, is that in this game, let's say I bust. Mm-hmm. And there's a good chance you'll bust. I still get to buy a new chip to throw in my bag. Sure. That makes okay. me feel good. All I right. can kind of customize my bag. No matter what happens, I get to do something. I can buy one or two chips. And as you bust, you're still probably getting more and more money. And eventually you won't bust or you'll get you know, you'll have ways to get around that. Right, and right. I just like the game. I've won this game, but I've also lost it a lot. Mm-hmm. And even every time I lose it, I just had a good time playing the game. I made this little bag full of all these cool chips. Right. 
So very enjoyable game. Mm. You know, I I've heard this, I've yeah. heard people really? say that it's lazy or it's too vague to use the word fun when you're talking about a game, but sometimes it fits. Yeah. And this game is just fun. I can't hey, Siri, <laughs> what are synonyms for fun? It's good garish fun. Um, <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> She, she doesn't recognize no, you. This listening. game, this game is a joyful game. You people, you, every time they're putting their, it's like they've got this little grin on their face. There's just something primal almost about it. I don't know. I, it's, it's just fun. I actually really enjoyed this game too. I've only played it the one time, but I played with the expansion and it was a lot of fun. Like building the bag and trying to build it up. It gives you is like that. that me you're playing? Yeah, we played it with the the witches expansion mm, stuff. I and it's just, it's just fun That's to play the game is. and like build the bag. It feels so. gives you like the dominion feel of when you're doing combos. Said it's fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my number 26, backed up by these two, mm -hmm. is Quacks. I'm Quack sure I would back you up if I played it. This I bet you like fun. it. I bet Q -O -Q. you like it. I've noticed no one has like abbreviated this one online, QOQ. -Q. Yeah. It's just the Quacks. The I quacks. don't want to pronounce that out loud, I think. Let's move on. <laughs> my number 26 don't try that. is a game that, you know, I used to say that I really didn't like skirmish games. That used to be you kind don't, of my, right, I remember that. Like, you know, I don't really like skirmish. They're not my thing. And then I played uh, Unmatched, and I really liked that. And I played Funkoverse, and I really liked that. But the game that I like the most of Checkers. this style Wildlands. is Wildlands. Yeah. Wildlands! I ba -na -na -na. was knocked out by this game. It was so not in what, what I thought was my wheelhouse. Really? It is so... Th th there's a couple of things I really like about it. Now, I will say, there are some production issues that really bug me, and I wish they'd take care of that, but... Um, I feel like it has to do with the cards. The, well, it's, it's the fact that the, the characters... It's hard to sometimes differentiate which character is which. Hey man, that's why I picked the one with the big giant. Yeah, you always know who that's that guy That's my is. biggest issue. If they could get that figured out, it would be even better. But even as it is, it's worth dealing with that because just that little thing of you, you're dealt ten cards. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a numbered map. Every spot has a, has a number. And you're dealt ten cards, and it's one of those numbers. And five of them you keep for where your characters are going to sp spawn out on the map, mm -hmm. so you know where those are. And the other five are where you're going to put the crystals for the person to either your left or your right. I can't right, remember. Right. And that's where they have to go. When the setup is such a fun part of the game, my favorite part of the game is at the beginning, where you're like, oh, man, okay. It's just so great. It really <laughs> I is. don't know if I would agree on that well, one. Well, I mean, I, maybe not the favorite part. The rest part, of the game is just really uh, a payoff. <laughs> it's a that. letdown after that setup. No, it's not. But it's all downhill from there. Normally, the setup is just a time you have to sit through. But this is actually a part of the game no, I that, I really, that, yeah. that I really, really like. And it's fast, and it's punchy, and it's... It, it's it doesn't overstay its welcome. I was gonna punch something. Oh, punchy! Um, I've I've played with. Um, <laughs> denied, know, there's, a, there's a camera. Denied right. the fist bump. <laughs> I've played with four of the maps now, and I like how the maps are changing up, how things uh, work together. I, I want. Do you like to Judge Dread? I'm not interested in Judge Dread. <gasps> I'm happy with this. Give me my generic. I am the give law. me my generic fantasy <laughs> with this. Um, and I also like the two expansion factions. So oh, Wildlands. I love the skeletons. Yeah, love the skeletons. Yeah, keep, Who keep, doesn't? keep more Wildlands coming. I say, nice job, Osprey. Twenty six. I like the skeletons as a separate faction. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, because there's support if you want or something. Right. No, when someone dies, a skeleton you comes in, right. and then anybody can control that right. skeleton. But which you I like, like that's what you like, or you like them being an actual faction? Both. Yeah. Well, you do like both. But ways. I like the fact that there's that fifth faction that I you can play too. with. And they have like weird cards. If they uh, do, they don't. They don't. Strange card usage. They don't. Well, they only have. They have six people, I think, mm -hmm. and the cards can activate more. You, they're easier to activate, but they're weaker. Yeah, right, and, and right, you need right. four That's of them, I think, to collect rather than normally three. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. harder to collect. It's all about killing. Yeah, it's which good. I tend to. I feel like I should play this. You should play this. What? I'm. I'm gonna start. I'm. I'm keeping track of demerits. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, Quack's playing. I mean, demerit. Wildlands, demerit. If, Nothing you, if for me. you unshackle me from my desk and let me. No, I'm just <laughs> Complaining, demerit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, give us your next one. Awesome. My next one is another space game. Demerit. <laughs> Some would say this is the uh, the game that kind of started the Kickstarter craze, and that is mm. Alien Frontiers. I really enjoy this, like, dice placement game as you're rolling dice, trying to area control the board, but get the resources you need to be able to put stuff out, and you're all just racing to get different special powers off the different places on the planet there. It's just a fun game, and I really enjoy just the way that the, the dice combos work together on this game. And it's cool to get special powers and maybe the dice. It's just really simple and really fun, and um, it's a really... I don't know about really simple, but 
It's pretty simple. I don't think it's that complicated. Mm. It just, looks. I think the game looks more complex yeah. than it is. You just I, need like pairs. Mm. Or, I actually like or, the aesthetic. Do you want to hear more about Feast for Dice. Odin? <laughs> no, I guess you're right. Compared to Feast for Odin, mm. this is basically Yahtzee. Yeah. I like the aesthetic. I do feel like it's aged a little bit, but but I do like the aesthetic of it, and it's still a fun game. I mean, yeah. I still would play it. I like the nod that they did naming all the areas after mm. uh, science fiction authors. Yeah, mm. for sure. yeah, that's true. That's and a I cool just, touch. I mean, if you haven't noticed, I really enjoy space theme, as you might continue to see on this list. I think the only thing I don't like about this game, and I never really did, it never bothered me that much, I guess, was the scoring, the, the, the way scoring works. Oh, I love mm. that. Or like, you control an area, it's a single thing to control it. Right. You get two points. Two points. If somebody else jumps in there. Yeah, like, if you're ever removed, it's actually, like, possibly, like, a three or four That's point true. swing, but yeah. you're only going to, like, ten points. Mm. That's yeah. the only thing that irked me a little bit. I don't like the scoring in it. It's, like... Super plain area control. Yeah. You know, but it's I not really like I have six tokens. Dang it, you got to seven. It's like one, one, two. Oh, mm -hmm. now you have two. You know what I mean? Yeah. But other than that, you're right. I, this is a good one. I like figuring out how to min max those points and get the people out on the plants in the right place. And like, hopefully, someone else doesn't jump in the place you need. It's like, oh, they jump there. Well, I don't care about the special power anymore. I'm going to go over there, so I lose the power. I love that manipulation. I think for of min the max board. people, actually, you said it. I think yeah. for people who like that, yeah. they will like this. So that's why I enjoy Alien Frontier so much and why it's my number 26. All right, what do I got here? This is technically also new, but you know what I did is just swap out the old version of this with the new one. Uh, pick the one you want. I don't care. This is newer. Last Bastion. Mm. Um, not, not on Z's list last year. Obviously. Because <laughs> it was ghost stories last yeah. time. Why, is, why this one for me, if you must know? <laughs> It's newer. I think it's a fair you question must to ask. Know wow. On my fair list, question explaining these like, things. Like, why would this bump out ghost stories? Yeah. Um, it's newer. I'm more enamored with it as of right now. Sure. And you I cannot ever see myself. I teach a lot of games to new people generally. Yeah. I mean, when I do, it's likely that they won't be like, oh, yeah, ghost stories, sure. I got two copies of that at <laughs> home. They probably have no idea what these games are. Yeah. I'm much more likely to reach for this and teach it than ghost stories at this point where I am in, in gaming. Yeah. Mm. Um, I do wish the theme was better. Mm -hmm. It's a boring theme. It is. But this game is much more streamlined. It's simpler to understand, grasp, do well eventually. Mm -hmm. It's still super hard. I don't think it scales as well as the original one. Um... But it's, but stick with four. It's so good at four. Yeah. I don't where you know the last time I, I played Ghost Stories with two, but I much prefer it with four. Right. And this is really good at four. This was your seven last year. Yeah. There's four people at this table. I'm just saying. What? I wouldn't mind. Are playing you saying this game. we you need to play? Played? No. Have played you played Razor Khan? Demerit! <laughs> now you're tied. <laughs> How many demerits do I have, sir? How do I get a demerit? Oh, okay. I'm asking I meant, to play I meant the they game. They were tied. He, I don't have enough pages. He's been keeping the, all the demerits from all the. You don't years. have enough pages. I don't have enough demerit. I feel I, like I buy <laughs> office supplies. I've been here a year, and Mike's been here like a, a few months, and he has as many demerits as me. I'm just saying. Don't just don't like get cut off. Get started details, about right? office supplies. I was there this morning. I do love office supplies. You all were right. there this morning. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> My goodness! Didn't you put one of them out of business because you bought everything they had? <laughs> No, but it sure felt like I did. Yeah, you did. They were going yeah. out of business. I was like, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Grab all the shopping carts. Feeding for Anyway, me. Blast Bastion, good co-op stuff. Check it out. All right, number 26 for the people is was 56 last year and wasn't on the list before that. Um, this one's going to probably be in a top 10, I think. Hmm. It's the most critically acclaimed cooperative game, I think. That just keeps rising. Hmm. And every time we mention it, people are like, Z did not like it. And that's... Hmm. Um, Spirit Island. Oh, I thought that's what you were talking about. Yeah. This is wild. This is not a game. When we played that first time, I did not expect this to be this popular. Mm. I agree. I liked it a lot, mm. but I thought, Whew, this is complicated. I mean, yeah. this, this gets close to Robinson Crusoe level of complexity, right, in my opinion. Right. It does. And it's also hard, although mm. this one has some really nice ways of adjusting the difficulty as opposed to the other ones. But I did not expect it to just keep climbing. Right. Yeah. It really has. No, it's complex. I think the thing this, this does best is you'll hear people all the time say, you cannot have a co-op game without a quarterbacking problem. And I say, yes, you can, right here. 
you almost can't quarterback this. Because well, you don't know what the right. other people have in That's their it. deck. Because everyone and... has to be controlling and you have to be synergizing with each other. Mm. Um, but it's long really long for what it is quite honestly and it's complex and I think that that's it means it's less wild widely appealing but for the people that that like it man and I do I like it a lot but you do oh, I do okay. like it oh. but I, like it too. I play it solo I know you like it yeah. you play solitaire yeah is you it know, not that hard to manage what's going on no 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 not at all you can play with one with one spirit for me I hardly ever bring this one out though because mm -hmm. I sit there and go I don't want to have to teach it. Yeah, teaching is a bear. You know, so uh, yeah. there's a lot going on. But I, if I had known it was going to be this popular, I would have lied and said I liked it. Right. You know? <laughs> Demerit! <laughs> I'm nothing if not uh, wanting to be accepted. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump back. <laughs> Keep going. All right, my number 25 has been on the list for 15 years. Oh, huh. goodness. <laughs> Here we go. You're going to throw 20, me for a loop here. And 15 years ago, it was number 26. Mm -hmm. But the puzzle pieces were shaped differently. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right, Mike, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me talk real quick about Pitch Car. I do love the game. Mm -hmm. All right. In fact, we're having a, a quandary right now about Pitch Car because we're, we're, we need to load it up for the cruise. Mm. But I don't want it on the cruise. I want to take it to the cruise pre-party. But I also want to ship it to West, and then stuff from the cruise is going to West. Mm. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, right. Split it into two sections because I actually have that much pitch car stuff. <laughs> oh, so you're sending some to the cruise, some West. Yes. Because there's just that much, and you will be able to make well, a full track. Well, some fool keeps buying pitch car <laughs> stuff every time it goes on sale. What fool? I'm pretty sure it's my office manager, Kenny, and he's not here to say otherwise. <laughs> oh, good call. <laughs> good call. I really like pitch car. Like, I have enough to make, I think, four of those tracks wow. of that size. Wow, insanity. <laughs> Is this your highest ranked dexterity game? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Probably. Um, dexterity, I love dexterity just as to make my top. This one I like just because it's... A show. Yeah. You know, when I play this game, I'll take it to church. I'll take it to a kids group. I'll take it to, you know, the, the conventions. Right, right, yeah. This, I, I probably take this to 15 different events every year, and it never, ever goes badly. No. Never. You know, th there might be one or two people who take it a little too seriously mm. occasionally. Sure, sure. But for the most part, this is the, one of the few games I play where everybody cheers for other people. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like usually in Jenga, we're like, make it fall. <laughs> and pitch are like, I hope you make the jump. <laughs> you know? It's really yeah. weird. It does that, though. Especially if someone messes up like five times. Yeah. The whole crowd gets behind them. It's just, I don't know. I just really like it. Yeah. If you have someone in your group who everyone, you know, who never wins a game, they can play this game and they'll, be in, they'll probably still lose, but they'll be encouraged because <laughs> everyone will be cheering for them. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I agree. I, I think it does have that quality. So, but it's super heavy, though. <laughs> it's unbelievably it's very, heavy. Very complicated. Mm. Yeah, very complicated. <laughs> it's game. a pitch car. My number 25 and the biggest shocker today. Mm. So nice, he had to say it twice. That's right. <laughs> My number 25 is a game that I do not understand why it has not become more popular. I really, really like this game. It I'll tell you why. It is a worker placement game with uh, some very significant twists. It mm. is a game from La Botteju, Outlive. This is such a good game that nobody talks about. Did it ever hit retail? I think it did. I believe it did hit retail because I don't have the fancy version with the plastic pieces. I like to say this is one of the few games I know of where the not fancy version is better. Oh, that's good to hear because that's the one I have. Um, this is such a good worker placement game with really it's much more interactive than most worker oh, placement it sure games is. because it's got this whole system of when you go to the same spot as somebody else, you have to compare strengths and you can kind of take some of the resources, which is thematic because this is a post-apocalyptic game mm -hmm. where you have scarce resources and let me tell you, when you're playing it, you feel the scarcity of those resources. If someone goes to a spot before you, they could potentially take all the water. You're still going to that spot and now what are you going to do? You have to figure out how to how to make something out of that turn. It's mm. really good. It's kind of like Fallout Shelter the game mm. because you you are trying to get those resources to bring back to your underground right. shelter and 
the way that the room the rooms in your shelter all give you abilities they're basically your special abilities but you have to have those rooms fully staffed and the people in them fully fed for those abilities to be active and triggered and it's this real intricate give-take puzzle every turn. Uh, and then you have these events that come out at the beginning of the rounds you have to deal with. Well, you don't have to, you can choose to deal with them. And if you do, you get victory points. If you're the one that's able to f f uh, figure out and, and complete that event, you get points, but it helps everybody. Because okay. now, now nobody has to deal with the negative aspects of that. So just a really good game that I wish more people uh, were playing because I think they would like it. I like I'm it. sitting here. I've played. I know I've and played. You forgot. Mm -hmm. I just barely you know, I know I've played. I mean yeah. you put it up there, I remember the cover. But you put the board up there and I'm like, I don't remember a thing about this wow. game. Wow, okay. And as you're explaining, I'm like, okay, I kinda remember that. Oh, okay, yeah, I kinda remember the bit the little little rooms, yeah. Yeah, you could scavenge for th for I don't for, remember it. Oh yeah. Man. I like Maybe it, but you're right, it. it definitely wasn't like, Hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. No one's talking about it. It's a really good game. Well, you talked about it. I am now. That's right. right. And the, you're the, somebody. This is about to shoot up. Like, the stock Get is ready. about to <laughs> run it's out. A, if it's on the hot thing on BGG today, it would be like the, the Delicio effect. Nah. <laughs> That's a thing. It's not delivery. <laughs> it's Delicio. Yeah. Nice. All right. My 25 is another space game, but this time it's area control. I'm sick of space. <laughs> I'm out of space. Hold on. I mean, I got a few more. Um, <laughs> anyway, I really enjoy um, this game. It is a game from Plat Hat Games, and then it's Starship Samurai. This wow! Oh. I really uh, love Starship Samurai. Okay, so Outlive is basically Settlers of Catan and its popularity compared to Starship <laughs> Samurai. <laughs> nice! But yeah, I really love this game. The action selection, this I is like a ton of fun. I this game. This is a good game. Yeah, but you, how you many copies of this do you think they sold? 15? No, there was an expansion. 20? There was an expansion. It has to be popular. Oh, okay. Anyway, you have different mechs that you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're all draft at the beginning of the game, and they have different special powers on them. You all have your spaceships. You're trying to, like, take over these different planets. The cool thing about this game is you have a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4, and there's several different actions you can take, and you have okay. to choose how you want to put those actions out. Do you want to move four ships? Then you put the four on there. Do you move one ship? Do you draw four cards? That's a really good action mechanism. Cards, the action cards are really powerful in this game, and it's also all about these, like, shifting alliances. You're trying to gather favor from all these different houses and and get points off of that. And there's also combos in those like action cards to be able to like push the favor up in certain houses. There's a lot of interesting tricks and stuff in this game. If you haven't seen Starship Samurai and you love like the look of the crazy space battles and and like oh. area control, maybe check this game out because I've had a lot of fun playing with it and I like, like playing it at cons. It's a lot of fun. I um, really do like this game. And that's I Starship like Starship Samurai. Are those giants? Yeah. They are, they're like This mechs. is like Voltron essentially. Hmm. It it like fits Who? It fits like that Voltron. anime space <laughs> like, down, like mech thing, and the, the, the mechs in this are awesome because the cool thing is like there's only a certain number of spaces, and when you fill them all up, when you move a mech in, it actually like crushes another ship in that area. Yes. So you can kind of do little combos of like, I'm going to move a ship here, I'm going to move a ship here, and then I'm going to move my mech in and crush one of your ships. Oh, so there's and murder in this. I like it. it also, now. you get to be, you get to be two of the mechs. I, and the sculpts are pretty neat. I like yeah. The mechs just feel good. The only problem I have with the game is that they didn't include those round bases of right. colors. I can never remember uh, whose mech is which. Yes. So that is that is kind of annoying. Um, but that's why if you like maybe there's something up, on Etsy for that. Makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, or you could 3D print the thing. For there's this actually game? I know there is 3D printed ones for this game as well. Yeah. I, I, I really need a 3D printer, Roy. You Have need I somebody mentioned who that? 3D prints things. That's right. Well, you know. Well, but, this was uh, this was like a pretty big release at Gen Con a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you think it didn't take off? It had an expansion. It must have sold at least a little well. I just yeah, I don't hear. Are you sure this had an expansion? It did. It, it adds like a couple more um, of the the mech guys and then. Adds like some, some extra more cars, cars and stuff. Hmm. Like yeah, that. I like it's it. It's not super big. I need to try it. I mean, I give it a shot. It's, it's fun. It's, it's really in the quick. Star Library. All right. It's really quick. And that's, that's another a, thing. I say, man, we're just you know what we should do is go over these lists again. Yeah. And on the cruise, just play stuff we heard about yeah. here but not been played. That's a good mm. idea, actually. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I have mine in checklist form. If anybody mm. wants to. Oh. I played. I played all your stuff. <laughs> No, you haven't. You haven't played my next one. No one's played your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> my number 25 is uh, <laughs> a game nobody cares about. It's old and broken and stupid. Mm -hmm. No, it's actually fantastical. 
Mission Red Planet. Oh, well, I thought I you were like saying it was game. fantastic. Uh, but it's okay. a good pick. No, fantastic. I don't think I've ever played. I played this one. It's an amazing game. You haven't played this. <laughs> I wouldn't call what you did with this game play. Let's put it that way, okay? You fumbled about like a young toddler. <laughs> you haven't played. I really like this. Area control, little card manipulation. I love... Um, what is the system called? The, the Citadel's system... Character, character selection? selection? Yeah, yeah, character right. selection, yeah. Character selection. I love it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I, this I round too. I'm going to mm -hmm. be, I'm going to pick the, the Femme Fatale, Femme Fatale, who's going to allow me to do this thing. Bam. Mm -hmm. That number gets called, you do your thing. I love it. What a clean, easy, fun system that, because of its mechanisms, manages to be about all this other stuff, like area control, mm -hmm. right in there, and push your luck. Is my number going to matter by the time I get called? Right. Throw that in there, you know. It's about being mean and confrontation. Yeah. <laughs> Put that in there. Yeah. But it's all in like a deck of nine cards. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, this is just super fun. This is the new edition, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, the old one, it's just super, super gone. Right? Yeah. This was 33 for you last year. Yeah. Look at that. It moved up. I love those little things like, like well, I'm going to be going to this planet. And then, no, you're not. You're going over here. Oh, you're not, yeah, I just yeah, love yeah. that stuff. That changed the destination uh, of the spaceship. Mike, it's stop. Great. It's, it's great. It's brutal. It's brutal <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the people. The people's choice for number 25 was as high as number two in 2013 and 2014. Whoa, it was two. Insanity. And three, seven, 15, 20, 25. So it's slowly going down. Mm -hmm. But it is... Already been on someone's list here. Probably yours, maybe. It's the game that you said it's the definitive version of Yahtzee. King of Tokyo. Yes, King ah, of Tokyo. So it came on to People's Choice at 18. Was super that hot. was the first year. Wow. They showed up at 18, then shot the two. Yeah. It's just that popular. It is. I think it's just not as available at this point, maybe. Hmm. The new printing's available, isn't it? I don't know. I guess so. It's just old. It also it's could be the king, king of New York. Yeah, that's it. It's well, this delayed. is the eighth year. And again, it's 25. So yeah. That's not bad. No. Um, they continually make new monsters, yeah. new dice. Um, it was hilarious. At, at um, Essen, I went there and I saw that around the world, the different versions of King of Tokyo have a unique monster in them oh, really? for the different countries. Oh, interesting. And Jason's head almost exploded because <laughs> he does not have all those monsters. Oh, man. And I even, I'm not like that need to collect everything. And I thought, I wonder how much it would cost to hunt down some of these. <laughs> and I was like, Psh, you don't need to. Because our King of Tokyo in the library already has like 25 yeah, monsters yeah, in yeah. it. What's yeah, the yeah. America... Is there one that's specific? It's to the uh, the kitty one, I think. Oh. The uh, robot kitty, so, cyber, cyber kitty, cyber, cyber kitty. kitty yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Cyber bunny. Oh, isn't it? oh there's a and they're coming bunny. out with that know. new one, that uh, dark. Yeah, yeah. King of Tokyo Dark or whatever King that's of coming Tokyo after this dark. year. After dark, yeah. <laughs> not after dark. It's a very different game. <laughs> um, that's coming out this year, I think, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll see a resurgence of this. If that they, could be. I that swear, if they be. ever came out with miniatures. Oh, man. I don't get it. Why do they not want to ah, print what money? What is wrong with you? That's, that's free money, yellow. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. People would go nuts, especially if they were, like, pre-painted. Like, oh, if they kickstarted this, oh, I would just buy yes. them straight out. <laughs> Why are you angry right now, though? <laughs> Calm down. He's channeling his inner uh, cyber bunny. Calm down, cyber bunny. <laughs> what was that? I'm, no, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> HR is getting a talk to. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's move on to 24. All right. My hmm. number 24 was on my list for the first time last year at 31. Although last year, I believe I was the only person in America, other than the people I played it with, who had played this game. Well, la di da. No, no, no. I, I'm saying that it's probably going to move up higher on people's choice as time goes by. Um, then they did a Kickstarter. It did extremely well. And now in our game group is one of the most played games. And that's Kingdom Death Monster. Awkward Guests. <laughs> <laughs> awkward Guests. Oh, man. This Doesn't one has yet. really jumped up in the ratings for a lot of people. But for me, this is still by far... My favorite deduction God, game. I, I play really this. like this yeah, game. Well, we, you haven't played either? I played. I really enjoyed yeah. this game. I think it's you awesome. You haven't played? I have not played it. Let's play. Yeah. Let's make Tom teach us. It's fun. If we do all the let's plays you just mentioned, that's like a 24-day marathon. 24-hour marathon. On the cruise. That's right. 
Can they kick us off, technically? Technically, if? very much yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I believe Allegedly. they will pick you up and carry you off. <laughs> All right. You fine. can try. Hmm. What if, in the, if I'm in the middle of a game, I'm like, but madam, I'm in the middle We're of a game. We're doing a sit-down strike. <laughs> sit I, down I probably would have considered this for my list as well if I had played it more. I've only played it one time. But one of the things I really love about this is also, like, you have to try to, like, figure out the characters a little bit. Because sometimes the characters can give you, like, information and kind of lie to you a little bit. But they'll lie to you here and also lie to you there. That's why you like it. And no, but like, only the murderer lies. No, I played. I played a scenario. Oh, or if you played the hardest played scenario, scenario and, and someone was accomplice. just straight up dumb. They were just dumb. They were accusing everybody, and I had to put the math that they were accusing everybody into play. Just be like, they're they're wrong. This other person's right. You it was know? like Knives Out. Mm. It was super interesting. This is basically Knives Out. No, <laughs> this is Clue, but good. Mm. So Knives Out. <laughs> Got it. I need to see that movie. Yeah, it's good. All right, 24, awkward guess. Don't be put off by this cover. Uh, although, obviously, enough people aren't. Yeah. You know, it's doing really, really yeah, well. Yeah, no, no. Um, but it's it's great fun. Awkward guess. Kind of great play. investor right. game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that. My number 24 is uh, the first of a new series of games that are going to continue from uh, Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald. This is Architects of the West Kingdom. A, uh, we've talked a little bit about it before. Uh, the, man, these games just fit my wheelhouse. I mean, ra Raiders and Architects, and I just these games work for me. Um, I, the, the variation on a theme, worker placement is one of my favorite mechanics, but this just takes a little bit of a different. I also like how fast this game is. This game is it does not waste any time. You, right. you start with all your workers, you're going at it, and the more you progress the game, like if, if everyone's going to the cathedral, it's going to be even quicker. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. So there's a little bit of, of player-based pacing, and I always like that when the players have some say in when the game ends. Right. That adds a little bit of tension Just to a to game. Just to clarify, players always have a say in when the game ends. Well, that's, <laughs> I mean... Uh, it works like this. There is that aspect. Game but over. There's no fixed number of rounds. You know what I'm saying? I, I like when You're you have to. You <laughs> King of Tokyo monster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? Wow. That Why is funny. Is the Man. strangest impersonation I've ever Woo. seen. Um, yes, I've completely lost. I'm ruining my kicks. Everybody I'm has. No, just this idea that. You, you have things you want to accomplish, and you don't know if you can because someone else can rush the game in before you. I Some think that's jerk. Always. Some jerk, yeah, perhaps. I don't know. Some cyber bunny coming, jumping up in their business. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give myself a demerit for that one. I really like Architects <laughs> of the West Kingdom. This is a fantastic game. If you have not played it, you really need to. Uh, nice. My 24 is... Uh, maybe a space another. game. It's, it's a space game. Tell is that really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm it's sorry. Space. Listen, no my guy's on a rocket screen. ship for a reason. Come on. Yeah. Um, oh, I have to geez. stay true to form. I didn't know this there is the last space, space game videos. this time. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoy this. <laughs> this is a 4X space game that also feels very Euro-y, and that is Eclipse. Mm. What? I, I thought that Twilight Imperium fans... We're not allowed mm. to like Eclipse. I really that was the enjoy I the 4X yeah. genre. And Eclipse has some really interesting stuff, and I really enjoy the way that not only are you like stretching out your empire, but you also have to manage the resources you have and the money you have to be able to keep it growing. And you have to be very careful how you expand, because if you don't, your economy will fall apart. The, one of the things I also love about this game is you get to build your ships the way you want to. You can put the guns on there you want, you want put the missiles on there you want, you can put the things on there to jam missiles, whatever you need to put on there to make your ships how you want to. And there's kind of like different architect types of ships that'll work better against each other. Then you, I, I love Euro-y games that let you collect resources and spread out, but then also like let you attack your opponents with those resources you've gathered. I don't know, it's really fun for me. And uh, I, I really enjoy a lot about Eclipse and I can't wait to see the new version of the game. Um, it's just, just cool. I'm sorry, what new version of what you speak? There's oh, yeah. I, the Eclipse I'm game kidding, it's out. taking forever. I'm sure chat's now like, where's my game, where's my game? Yeah, they, they have kickstarted in... Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I want to say in 18, wasn't it kickstarted? Yeah, it was it's, it's it's 1800s? Yeah. <laughs> I especially yes, like the, the, uh, the juxtaposition of this map on that 
tablecloth. That's very I've, good. I've done this before. I played on like a checkered uh -huh. tablecloth. No, the clips. Yeah. I will just. I can't play a game on that kind of it's, nonsense. It's, it's no. hard to pull off. I have to say, I don't like. Uh, I've realized uh. by now one of my bigger turnoffs is a, is a space game. That's hexes, mm. and each hex is just like a bunch of ships, plastic ships. Mm. It's like, I explore space, draw a new tile, put it there. Here's a bunch of ships. <laughs> that aesthetic, I I'm love it. super over it. But what about it. on a flower I would like it more if there wasn't cubes all over the place. However, yeah. cubes are in the, the other one I like, Exodus, so I guess. I enjoyed a lot, and you're building up technology, building up all stuff. It gives you that 4X feel, but like you said, very Euro-y um, as you go along, and economic in that, too. So in in space, no one can hear you min-max. That's what I, I don't heard. know if you would like it, actually. actually I played this. It's, it's, did? Still, I think so. it's still on the long side. It's yeah. like 30, it's 40 long. minutes per player. Yeah, I think I played so. this. I played it once. I want to see. Don't did they recall. change anything in the new version? Yeah. It's mostly the same. They just the added in like, like the, the, the nicer ships. They added in some of the expansions. I stuff. want them to get rid of the random tech troll. That's the thing I dislike yeah. the most. I like the game, but there's a like certain technologies. Like I'm sorry, you can't learn how to do missiles because uh, they, they lost that in a toilet Man. or something. I kind of enjoy that though. It makes Space it makes toilets? being the first player in a round <laughs> so important. Um, Seems like they changed the availability in the second edition. That's all I know. You can't get it. I mean, there's some Never really cool coming. stuff that looks like it's coming out. One of the things I really think is cool is the fact that they made like these, like, I don't know if it's game trays or not, but they made these trays that hold all the cubes and everything. Hmm. One of the problems with this is, like, if someone shook the board, your game was ruined. Yeah. Um, and you had to get those plastic mm. little things. <laughs> oh, you had. <laughs> you board. had to get the things. Like, you had ruined. Those. <laughs> this is the first game I remember thinking, why didn't they think yeah. of that? That was right. crazy. All right, what but you yeah. got? My 24 is a game called Nagaraja. Hmm. This, this is, is new to the list, I would imagine. This is new, I think, yeah. It's a two-player only game with um, some card play, some dice rolling with those weird sticks. <laughs> those are the dice. Hmm. I want to play the game for that purpose yeah. solely. Yeah, they're cool. You just <laughs> grab a handful of those things. and <laughs> You made them sound cool there. <laughs> shake them and toss them, and then you're going to get either coins, which is the pips, if you have more than your opponent, you are the one who actually drafts the tile. There's one tile available. You place it somewhere in your grid, your three by three. Mm -hmm. But if you roll the side that has a little snake on the dice, mm -hmm. then you get to play a card for its special ability for each of those little snakes you, you rolled. And those are all sorts of crazy stuff, mm -hmm. super fun. And yeah, you're just building paths, connecting to the different treasures on the outside, those nine tokens on the outside. And uh, this one is... Breezy. It's sort of. It's easy to play. I yeah. enjoy it a lot. There's multiple ways to win. You can, as I've said in another video, if your opponent really is running way ahead of you because they keep winning auctions. Well, for one thing, if they win, you get two cards. They get one, and you pick the one they get. Mm. So, you know, there's that. You draw three, and you'll give them one. I think that's how it works, anyway. Um, but besides that, if they are really starting to uncover a lot of those treasures. You can manipulate it possibly where you give them the three cursed ones, and if those mm. three are ever ever revealed at the same time, they lose. Oh, that's cool. So the closer you get to victory, you also have to be mindful of that you don't get bloop, stuck with those. This is just fun, fun in a box. Love the look, love the gameplay. Real neat stuff. Yeah, well, it's a that's a high premiere, you know, for the 24 for the first time. That's good. That's, yeah, must be good. I've just it is, and I've enjoyed it a lot. You know, it's a yeah. very um, What's the word? It doesn't feel uh, pretentious. Mm. Unassuming. All right. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it just doesn't. It doesn't feel pretentious yeah. to me. It feels like here's a box, mm -hmm. some game in it. It's fun. Play it. It's not feast for Odin, but it also doesn't care that it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's garish. No. Sad <laughs> <laughs> <Cyber> bunny. <laughs> the people's twenty-four. Was there 22 last year, and mm. it's already shown up on both of these guys' top 100. Well, excuse Ooh. me. It better be on my list. Actually, I don't remember if it was in your top 100. Go ahead. Let me it see. Let me see. Rising Sun. Woo. Oh, was it yeah. in your top? I know Blood Rage was in your top 100. Mm -hmm. uh, I, well, I know I'm this is not a spoiler, because it's definitely not in your top Rising 30. who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Rising Soon. It is not on my list. No. Okay. Um, this one, again, is it? It is not the highest ranked for the people's choice okay. of the 
Kuma Near Not games, but sure. it is, it's a pretty solid pick. This was mm-hmm. a very popular game when it was announced. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yes. having the big monster certainly doesn't hurt the game. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, it plays five well. It does. There's not a lot of games that play That's the bigger true. numbers well. That's true. Three is where it's at with this game. I do like the three, three player is game good. of this. I love so, this game at three. It's really good at three. <laughs> I really do think that's the, for me, that's the favorite number, usually because I will lose to fewer people. That's that true. Way. Yeah. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never won in this game. I've it actually never won this game either. It is interesting. Now that the Awakened Realms games are becoming more popular, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see in a couple years where they'll line up with these. Mm-hmm. But one thing you'll say, there's a lot of Kickstarters that have a big miniatures that make a lot of money. There's yeah. a lot of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. But cool mini or not games get played. They do. Yeah. At least Rising Sun does, for sure. And right. So I like the Awakened Realms games. It's not just miniatures. I will tell you, these are much more streamlined in general. I mean, it's much easier to teach Rising Sun than, you know, Lords of Hellas, for example. I've taught them both. Would you agree with that statement? I'd agree with it. Yes, he would know. There's so many edges. Yeah. style, so you would know. Yeah, I think yes? so. All right, that's good to know, because I, I don't know. I haven't mm-hmm. played too many, if any, of the Awakened Realms mm-hmm. games, so... That's good to know, because I need them to be more streamlined. Yeah. I'm a dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Someone write that down? All right. That's 24 for the people's choice. All right. Number 23 Jeez. for me. Oh, I'm still looking at people's choice. Number 23 for me was on my list for four years. It was 89, 38, 36, and now up to 23. I feel like this is one of the games in my top 100 that I'm the only person who plays this game because I know it is now out of print, although it was one of the first family games from Haba, and that is Adventureland. Oh, this is a good game. I love this game, but I feel like no one else ever plays it. So this is a strange pick. I always do think it's kind of interesting how... This is the one that you decided yeah. to settle on. Mm. It seems like a middle of the pack kind of game. Hmm. I don't know what. You know what I mean? It's There's the a grid, lot of these. Man. Yeah, the grid's cool. The grid's got you, man. It scales really well. I'll call you Tron. From and now there's like on. three different games in the box, and I feel like. I could play any one of them. You're like, mm-hmm. this is the way we're going to... Well, now there's six. With the expansion, yeah. With the expansion, but the expansion I'm pretty sure nobody bought. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just it, This is my game that when people are sitting and we're looking at a library, it's in a lot of gaming libraries. Mm. No one has checked it out. Yes. I'm with uh-huh. some people and they're like, what should we play? And I'm like, ooh, have you ever played Adventureland? I already know the answer is no. Right. And I teach it, and everyone enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a good gateway game. The cover's boring. Yeah. Um, the game doesn't even look that pretty. It's just entertaining. It has a grid. Mm-hmm. I. You love grids. I know. <laughs> it's the most boring of shapes. I went home yesterday, and my kids had a TR, or the, the calculators, the Texas Instrument Calculators, oh, yeah. which you shouldn't need. I don't even know why they have one. Um, because it's on the phone now. Yeah, sure. And I was sitting there like, ooh, I could like program some grid <laughs> stuff on here. <laughs> I'm a nerd! There's something fun about flipping over the card and saying, okay, where am I going to be putting, you know, what am I putting out? Am I putting out an herb? Am I putting out a sword? There's just something fun about that. Herbs I don't know and why. swords, Herbs man. and swords. That's what it should have been called. Herbs, Herbs and, and swords. swords. That's a good name for mm-hmm. a game. Better than Adventureland. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like an amusement park. It does. It does. Welcome to Adventureland! Yeah, yeah. definitely. But it's a fantastic game. That's it my is. number 23. It is. Kramer and Keesling. All right. Uh, my number 23, when it came out like seven, six, seven years ago, Ooh, I old. think got very badly misunderstood, and it got backlash because of it. Because it had this striking big box cover that... Garish? No, I don't think it's garish at all. I think it's gorgeous. But people were expecting a very different game than what they got in Abyss. Um, oh, fifth anniversary edition yeah. has just been released. It's a single new cover, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're calling it fifth anniversary edition, which is kind of funny because. Right. Oh, it's, so it's not that old. I'm sorry. I thought it was older than that. That's weird. It's five years, mm-hmm. and that's enough to celebrate? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That seems strange. All right. And also, the, the fact that there were the different covers worked against it, too, because I think people saw that as a marketing stunt, and maybe it was, but too bad. Maybe. Yeah, like the game was, it was. It was. It was. I only bought one cover, and it's the one, actually, that we see here. Um, this is just a slick, 
card game. It really is a card game. The board is completely unnecessary, um, but I like the art on the board, yeah. and it doesn't hurt the game. Um, could it have been a small box card game? It probably could have, but I feel like... No, I played the card game version of this. Oh, okay. It's not the same game. Okay. The experience it provides... No, saying could it have been, it could have been originally box. in a small box. But but to me, this, this the gives... The answer to that is, of course. It what, could have. Have you seen this game? Yes. Right. But it provides a big box experience, and so I think it warrants that much space on your shelf. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, gosh, it's such a good game. I, of course, the art and the aesthetic plays a big role in it. Um, I've wanted to get the Leviathan expansion. It's been out of print, and I think it's now back. You were it saying it was in print as of yesterday. Okay, so I want. I've you heard purchased no, it yet? No, no, I've heard that it makes it much better. It's sold out now. Are is you it? serious? I don't know. Probably. It probably is, but uh, well, it depends how quickly we get to twenty one. I was gonna say as soon as we <laughs> get done. Go! As soon as we get done. All right. Play Abyss if you have not. It's a fantastic, fantastic. This game. is one of those games that keeps climbing for me. Mm hmm. And I'm gonna bet money that's higher in his list. Oh, Watch. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. My twenty three is a game we're trying to. Uh, is it in space? It is actually not. I. This is. Woo. You sure? It's it's my second favorite theme. It's fantasy. In space. In space. <laughs> Starship. <laughs> samurai. Oh, samurai. Not fantasy. Space elves. But yeah, you're you're playing space out elves. like pairs of cards and suits of cards to complete quests, and this is Shadows Over Camelot. Mm. I really yeah, enjoy baby. Shadows Merlin's Over Camelot. Merlin's poker. You have a uh, basically, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're trying to complete these different quests. You're all there could be a traitor in your midst, and there should be if you play the game correctly. And it's Z Garcia. Um, but it's, it's, it's always fun like trying to even. figure it's this me. out. I've had so many great games of this. I played one game on my birthday where I was like, I'm not gonna look at my loyalty card. And <laughs> oh, I hate when people do that. <laughs> playing nonsense. the game, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do good. And then like halfway, like near the end of the game, someone's like, This is too too good. I accuse Roy. I'm like. <laughs> and it was me the whole time. Mm. Wait, also wait. Played. So to clarify, <laughs> you were the traitor, didn't play as if you were the traitor, didn't even know you were the traitor, and you were still accused correctly. I, I may because have was looked the only partially one through the game. But <laughs> huh? I may have looked partially through the game. Mm. But, oh, okay. but also, if everybody looked except him and the game's going too well, right. it's likely to be Did him. people know you didn't look? Yeah, I mean, I acted like, oh, I'm not. Yeah, anyway, but I've I'm also played. Firsthand. I've also <laughs> played this and acted like I was good the entire time and been like, listen, guys, let's end the game. The only way, because we were playing where there could have not been a traitor. The only way we lose this game is if there's a traitor amongst us as flips to whatever. And they're like, well, nobody's a traitor. I was like, are you a traitor? Are you a traitor? Oh wait, I am the traitor. And I flipped it over and we won the game. I feel like Warren has told great. us multiple times in super, this top super ten. Super jerk. To just <laughs> super jerk. <laughs> the a, I love a jerk. It, it is and great. That we should believe anything no, but he it's says like in he a loves game. To like reveal to you he's a jerk <laughs> in a very dramatic fashion. It's fun. You know what I mean? I he's know. like, are you a traitor? Are you yeah. a traitor? You're not. I know you're not. Cause that's me. <laughs> you know, it's like it's not it's just awesome. jerk. It's, it's like just throwing a cape on yourself and putting on the mask and being like, ha! Ah! <laughs> you know? I've done that in Bowser Galactic too. Man. Sometimes. <laughs> Getting a red flash here, right. He would be like, that's Super Roy. Yes, that's Roy. <laughs> but oh man, it's it's a fun game and it's and it's it's tense even as the good guys. Like you're like nail biting, like, oh no, one more catapult, we lose, we gotta get back to Camelot and take it out. It's just an awesome game and it's one of the games that actually got me into board gaming. Hmm. After I played this, I was like, I'm in, you know. Well, I'm board pretty games sure this came out when you were six. That is not true. I was playing. Board we games. should clarify that this man is Wait, older than you all think. Yes. Stop telling us we're picking on a kid. Forty-three <laughs> years old. Not far Ten off. Ten years younger, but that's it. You're not thirty-three. I am thirty-three. Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you were thirty-five. A cute I'm not that old. He's a cute oh, 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 my heart. Thirty-three is almost dead, people. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. Oh. I just can't. And he's just like. He's about to be a uh, blipped man. The, the dust. Thirty-five. <laughs> he has chosen poor. You got at least a couple good months left in you, Mike. Mm. Come on. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> All right. Cool. Shadows over Camelot. Good game. I'm just happy there's a lot of Katala on this yeah. on this chunk of uh, mm -hmm. video here. There that was Katala. Katala. And Katala. I mine's not. Katala. Yours was last time. It was. No, my um, 23 has been as high as, like, two, I think. 
This is like, oh, I'm all nervous now. Mm. What is it? What is that? Well, it can't be Pandemic, because Pandemic it's was some garbage one. little game that you're like, that garbage? That oh, ugly that is garbage? Oh, Nyrim. Oh, Nyrim it is. Ah. You've had three of these games on your list so far. So far. By the way, <laughs> I think the Nyrim artwork is quite good. I Stop yelling at me for not liking it. People yeah. keep saying, oh, Tom's always hating on the artwork. I feel like it's not me hating on... You know, subjective artwork. This artwork is objectively vomit inducing. <laughs> My son is five and draws better artwork than this. I like oh. it for this game. Wait, I really turned a quarter hard there. Yeah. That was mean. <laughs> that was a very sort of. I really canon. jumped into that one. That what I meant was it's fine if you like the artwork. Look at that tablecloth. Yeah, the very tablecloth. Very can a day like. sort of statement you just made. <laughs> what? Mean. Like super evil mean. <laughs> Uh, I like this game. It's a solitaire game, mm -hmm. or two players. But two it's players. a solitaire game. It's, it's a solitaire, solitaire also. I still remember that one con we went to where you taught it to like six people in a I row did it at the same time. Right? They had like two copies going. Yeah. And I was teaching two groups at the same time. I like this game. I think it's, it's a great good. solo. This game. was your ten last year. There you go. Lots of shuffling, but it's good. But at some point, it was really, really high. I think. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I like it. Uh, some of these games I'm cooling on because I don't remember the last time I played this physic in, in the physical format. I play the app every now yeah. and then still, uh, and I still do love it. There's no denying that. This yeah. is a great way to kill 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, but I think tw in the 20s is already. It's so high already. What am I even apologizing for? <laughs> <laughs> Onirim or Onirim or the vomit-inducing game, mm. as some people call it. Man, that's not that. Am I? Just am I the only person who doesn't like this artwork? I'm getting beat up in the comments. I'm sorry. Actually, I think it's amazing. Gordon. The title stands for "Oh No, I Retched in My." <laughs> and then the age was a silent stands for "Hat." <laughs> I think it works in this game. If every game had this artwork, I would not be happy. <laughs> okay, fine. The artwork's fine. I won't mention it ever again. That's a lie. I'm, mm -hmm. lie. I'm Boy, gonna not Canada mention it. Lie. It's gonna happen. <laughs> People's Choice number twenty-three. <laughs> the people. <laughs> Are wise because they have actually crossed over with me. Oh, I see how. Or I'm is. wise because I crossed over with the people. This is their 23, and it was my. 32. No, I just I just did it now. It was my 26. 26. Only yeah. three away. That's Quacks of Quedling. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, this one Makes is one that. This one is super popular. Hot. It won the Kenner Spiel in mm -hmm. 2018. That was where most people heard of it. Yeah. Right. It hadn't hit. It hadn't right. hit. Then North Star does a really good job at promoting their games. Mm -hmm. yes. They really push the games, and this one just did well. I've seen this. When we put this on the hot games table, it was at Dice Tower West this yeah. past year, at Dice Tower, at Dice Tower Con itself, mm -hmm. at the retreat, just consistently in play, yeah. which is why my pieces got worn out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a right, bold right, prediction. Right. Are you ready for the bold prediction? Top ten. Sure. Next year, this is in the top ten for wow. the people's choice. Mm -hmm. I'll say 15. Okay. If you want to hedge your bets, that's fine. No, no, I'm top not, ten. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm making my bets smaller. I'm saying okay. between fifteen and ten. All right. Okay. I, I think top ten. No, I'm saying fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven. I know. Well, okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. I'll say this will be higher than the taverns of Teeth and Tuffle Father. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's 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 for sure. Well, you're a bold man, Cotton. <laughs> I like this game, but I don't know that it's going to continue to go up. I think it's still good, but I feel like the so you're saying it's like, done at 23. And I feel like the people that like down. these games are going to. You know, we're not going to remember any of like. these bets anyway. Mm -hmm. so like, I've been writing that stuff. For example, you're going to lose Z that Garcia paper in said about two hours. Puerto Rico would be my number 57, <laughs> and it was not. It was like 35 or something. That's what I said. You said Space Base is my number seven. That could still happen. It hasn't shown up yet. All right. Well. We'll see. Between 7 and 15. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. All right, that's 23. All right, my number 22 is brand new to the list. Ooh. Uh, it's from this past year, and it is my favorite. I better be careful. I'm not going to say that because the say way. Say it. No, I'm going to say some of the way these things are. Anyway, this actually knocked off its father game off my list, hmm. which had been my list for several years, which was Clank. But Clank uh, Legacy ooh. is now up here. This is my favorite of the rip-up stuff type legacy games. Mm. Although mm. someone mentioned to me that you technically don't have to rip up the stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah. Why would you stop ripping it up? 
It's fun. You should have seen when we played this. Is you, every time I ripped somebody, I gave it to Roy, and Roy was like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was at always least worried. once walking into the room, and you guys would be playing something. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Roy would just turn to me and be like, hey. He was like, <laughs> ah, oh, okay. I was actually super worried that he would hand something and say, this is destroyed, and I would rip it. And then he'd be like, wait a minute. And I was going to be like, oh, my bad. He's got a shredder <laughs> at the table. He did, not, he did not, I did not pause. hesitate. And he also ripped the, he didn't just rip the card in half. Roy would be like, rip. Rip, rip, <laughs> like, come on. Eat I had fun. Like, I posted pictures of us ripping up cards for this. It was a blast. I don't know. It's a fantastic game, though. The story's good. They got it down to where one of my bigger complaints about Legacy games was I'm playing the same thing in a row. And while that's fine, the Legacy aspect has me wanting to see what's next. You never think that in Clank Legacy. Not only is there lots of new stuff every game, mm. it's consistently throughout each game. Mm. There's just always new things going on. Now, now that it's finished, I still enjoy it um, because the, I now have basically a customized version of Clank. It's like having Clank with one or two expansions added to it. Mm -hmm. And there's two sides to the board. You can play either side. There's a lot, and it's a really cool deck, I think. A lot of fun. Very, very high for me. I expect it to be on Roy's list, but maybe I'm wrong. Clank Legacy, my number 22. If I would have played it with some better people, maybe. Let's see. Ooh. Sounds right. All right. <laughs> My number 22 is an older, I believe, Matago game with, I think, a great theme. It's a tile laying racing game. Matago. Tile laying racing us, game. Matago. Tile laying. I'm going to give you another hint because I still don't think you're going to get it. Is it from. Uh, it's got polyominoes. Polyam from Antoine Boza? No, it's not from Antoine Boza. I think I think they're polyominoes. I believe they have different shapes. I mean, Matigo. definitely tops. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Matigo. Go ahead. Expedition Northwest Passage. No, that's not. Matigo. Yeah, it's Matigo. No, it's not. Editions du Matigo. No, oh, Editions du Matigo. <laughs> oh, that's not what you said. You said oui. Matigo. Oui. <laughs> This is a game that I feel like a lot of these on this section of my list are kind of like hidden gems to me. Uh, um, hidden something. You, have you played this? No. Oh, it's I terrific. I don't remember even hearing of it. It's terrific. You I, played I it. played it, and I cannot more disagree with you oh, on this Oh, man, this one. is a great game. Okay, so it's Vomit? a race game where you're trying to no, get... I did not like it. You're trying to uh, get to the Northwest Passage, obviously, as by the name. And you're cool laying, theme. Yeah, and you're laying down these tiles which have sections that are water and ice. And to me, the coolest mechanism in the game, you're trying to get from there to there and back. And the coolest mechanism is that you've got this little disc that goes around as the rounds go. And depending on where that disc is, the water is either sailable by ship or it's frozen and it's ice. You've got a ship and you've got a sled. And when it's ice, you have to be out of your ship and on the sled to be able to move. So you have to be aware of where not only you are now, but where you're going to be. I'm sorry, they're not polyominoes. They are just the, the well, rectangles. Well, technically you're right, yeah, but yes. Yeah. Um, but it's such a smart mechanism. It's a, it's a quick game, and it doesn't play like anything else I've played. Um, I don't always like race games, and this is a race game with a twist. So uh, this one I just think is really unique. I've played it for years, and it's still I still enjoy it. And no one seems to have played it, except for Tom, who hates it. I, I'm telling you, it sounds really cool, everything he just said. It's mostly lies. Not really, Tom. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound that cool. But it it's very appeal. puzzly. Hmm. If one person gets ahead, you could, you try could. catching up. It's not going to happen. What do you mean? You're out in the middle of the wilderness, surrounded by no one. You, you kill them. There's you also not a lot of diversity in how the game plays. You're just consistently ice, water, ice, water. Well, but the way the tiles, you get to decide the orientation of the that tiles. That is fascinatingly not. Um, <laughs> hey, look, I'm fine. I'm glad you like this, though, because it's a new game. Why are you hating on yeah. him? He I'm hating on his choice, but glad he made it. That's There you go. I'm against everything, but I stand for your right to say it, or That's whatever right. that garbage <laughs> phrase is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm I, happy you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Was that John F. Kennedy? <laughs> I'm happy you don't know what you're Kennedy talking about. That was a voice there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it a, was. It's it a, was. A, I mean, look at that cover. That's beautiful. You can play it. Don't listen to him. No, uh, like he doesn't no, play it's... games. Come on. No, I'm not saying you, you can play it. Go for it. It's good. Roy. Oh, can't get games worse. and no. stuff. Worse. Cool. My number twenty-two is not a space game. Um, or but fantasy. it is a worker placement game. Is it fantasy? Fantasy. Yes, it is fantasy. What's worthy? No. Mm. 
Good worker poker. Demon it worker. is. It is the Never better Lords of Fire Deep, where you actually get to fight monsters. Champions of Midgard. Oh. Wasn't that just on their list? No, it was on no, People's, was on choice. people's choice. choice. You should have said it's Crossover of People's Choice. Crossover of People's Choice. Champions of Midgard. Awesome game. I love this game because you're placing your workers out, getting all sorts of different warriors, and you're trying to gather resources to be able to send them out on voyages to be able to attack giant monsters. The expansions made this game even better with the fact that like now when your guys die, you actually kind of want some of your warriors to die. So you can get the combos. You can actually allow the them to die on purpose. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I love that new, part. <laughs> new types of dice you can get, and it's really awesome to have like berserker dice that are they're like awesome yeah. at fighting, or like <laughs> dice that are better at hunting and and being able to fight the giants in in the north and having to go through the mountains and all that. There's lots of awesome options in this game, and I definitely enjoy the way that it comes all together. And it's I guess it's a Euro game with a whole lot of luck thrown in there, but uh, I enjoy Champions of Midgard, and it's just fun, the theme on its cool, so. There you go. Fight monsters with dice, yes. But your people die. <laughs> yep. you're, you're, you're Valhalla, stuck on that man, part. it's for Valhalla. Oh, it's for Valhalla, then it's okay. Yeah, there you go. All righty, my number 22 is a game called Caper. Uh, this is a two-player drafting game, two-player only, in which you're going to be uh, Fighting over locations around the world, uh, and you will be drafting characters, spies, thieves, what have you. You'll be doing rounds of drafting those characters, place them at different locations, and then doing rounds of drafting equipment and giving it to those characters. You are controlling a few different things. You're managing some money, as you see there on the side. You are going to be basically doing a few rounds of drafting and then seeing if you get the most points. Uh, fighting over the locations is really just a part of the whole thing. There's also assigning the right things to the different characters that are sitting there and then some cards that just give you points. The color combinations are important. This one is, um, I remember when I first played this, and this is a reprint, the original one was uh, called something else. It's a game from Spain. Um, first time I played this I played three times in a row. Mm. Because they give you different cities, yeah. So it's like Rome or Paris or you know whatever. I played once with whatever city they say to start with, and I was like, "This is fascinating. I love it. This is. It feels like Seven Wonders, four two. Not Seven Wonders Duel, right? But like mm -hmm. it's like Seven Wonders. As if, if you would play for just two people fighting over something. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So I played again and I played again, and I almost never bring this out and not play multiple times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it, caper. I love the look of it too. That that aesthetic. Oh, this a reprint key from Keymaster I mean, is fantastic. It is. Yeah, they know what they're doing. What else it's does Keymaster make? Game. Are they parks? Are they're they parks? parks and space base and creepy creatures? Space Not space base. base. Uh, space park. Park. Sorry, space park. Park and creepy creep. Creepy creatures, I think. Campy creatures. Campy creatures. Yeah. I'm like yeah, really yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not yeah. quite getting these, but you know what I mean. All right. The People's Choice, number 22, has already been mentioned by Mike. Woo! People. And that's the Architects of the West Kingdom. Yeah. New to their list. Yep, yep. Very, very, you very, very popular. It's, it's where it's um, at. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, Garfield Games just hits people in the right spot. Man, they do. Um, because we already had seen the other one. Uh, the Raiders was Raiders on the of the West list. Kingdoms. Yep. Paladins is not on the People's Choice, but it's a it's matter of new, time. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the, I, th I think Architects will always be higher because it's easier it's to simpler, play. simpler, yeah. It is simpler. It's an easy game to jump into. It feels different. It's mm -hmm. fun. Your workers go to jail, but you can get them out. You know, yeah. there's some cool aspects to it. So, it's a good game. Good job, people. That's your number 22. All right. My number 21 is also brand new to the list. Ooh. This is... Is this my highest rated party game, I believe? Yeah. Yep. It's my highest rated party game on my list. That could change at any... No, it's not my highest rated party game. Never mind. It's my second highest rated party game on my list. But it's the newest party game on my list. And that is Detective Club. Mm. I really, Whoa, I really enjoy this. Yeah. As much as I like... Um, I wasn't expecting you to say this. As much as I like Dixit, I like Dixit a lot, Detective Club is better for me. Mostly because I like the aspect of lying games, like Malarkey. I've always liked the idea of Malarkey. I don't know if you remember Malarkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malarkey's a game back in the day where everyone would tell a story, mm -hmm. but someone like, was... Why are tennis balls fuzzy? Right. right. And, and then one you know, everybody comes up with a lie. If you come up with the same lie I had planned, then I only have till the beginning of my turn 
to make up a new lie. Right, right. The problem is it's really hard to make these lies up. Yes. And it's also hard for the person who has the truth to make, make it, it sound, sound not like the, the truth. Right. Yeah. But Detective Club makes people telling the truth sound like liars as all get out. <laughs> because you put these cards down, you give the clue. Or no, everyone sees the clue, but except for one person. And then everyone puts down cards according to that clue, and the per everyone has to explain why they picked the cards they picked. Mm. And sometimes people's explanation is so ridiculous, <laughs> they're obviously the liar, except they're not. Yeah. <laughs> I love this game. I don't think you've played this one yet, Z. Mm -mm. I really think you would like it. If you I'm like Dixit, played. I think this one is right down the line from it. Okay. Um, and I think it's now in a box. It's, it was been in a tin, it's a tin I know, which yeah. I hate. Yeah. Um, but what I'm really excited about is I like to. I want to be able to use cards from this and Muse and mm, Dixit that's together. That's why I made those sleeves in our Kickstarter campaign running mm -hmm. right now. Um, and I like to mix those up. But either way, it has that same artwork as Dixit. But I like this game better. Hmm. I yeah, it's really check fun. It out. It's really fun. I'd because like to try it. That, that Just that lying aspect works so well in this one. Even people who say, I hate lying, seem to get over that. So if okay. you want your kids to lie... Get good at lying. This is no, you're not. You're not good at lying in this one. <laughs> I, I I like this game, but the lying's too easy, and it's just too simple to get away. You know, you're too good at lying. Mm -hmm. That's what <laughs> it is. You know, you might be good at lying. You just never sound like it on one of these lists. Mm. I know, I know, I know. You sound good at being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try. All right, my number 21 is a game that was a successful Kickstarter. It had a whole lot of, uh, well, re decent amount of hype when it when it was uh, being released, and then it dropped like a stone. I feel Ooh, like... Stone's a clue. You no, know, it's not. I feel like so I'm... Uh, I'm Fist of Dragons... Tone. I think I'm the only person that likes this game this much, and that's okay because I like this game. I like Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia a lot. Mm. Now, I do want to wow. put it's out not there. the same game? What? No, it's absolutely not the same game. Oh, I thought it's it was. Not even close no, to the same no, game. no, it's not Maybe even close. Maybe that's the problem. Um, I want to put out there that I much prefer this as a cooperative game. It, it can mm. be played competitive or cooperative. I think it's not as strong competitive, but as a cooperative game, I really, really like this. It is quick. It is easy to teach. I like the fact, and I know some people don't like this, I like the fact that the, the monsters are dice. Okay. And you roll the dice, and the monster that comes up is the one that you have to place in that room that you'll okay. eventually have to face. Um, it is... You know, it, it obviously is set in the world of Arcadia Quest, and it uses, you know, the similar type of chibi style. Um, I don't know why. I really wish I could be more eloquent as to why I like this game. It just works for me as a cooperative game. I like moving the figures around. I like the monster dice. I like the the not knowing of which tile is going to come out. Is it going to be a trap? Is it going to be a treasure tile? That's fun. Exploration. It, I mean, I do like that, and it's so fast, and you got. Three level, you know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be the first level, you find the door, you go to the second level, you find the door, you've got the boss room. Okay. It's it, it's just, I mean, I know that I not everyone likes this it. I always thought was an expansion to Stop Arcadia. looking at me. I haven't disagreed with you here oh, okay. on camera. I on camera. always hey, look, thought. I'm ready for the hate night. I've never even realized this was a different game. I always thought this was an Arcadia expansion. As, as a matter of fact, this was, I believe, a Portuguese game that had been released before that got reset into yeah. the world of Arcadia oh, Quest. When it was put on the Kickstarter for, okay. for come on. I really like the monster dice. I don't think there's a whole lot of tension in the cooperative game, though. It seems mm. like you're just kind of. That's one of the things for me when I played it. I played it several times that mm -hmm. way, but it never felt like it was like. I didn't feel like I was in a threat of losing or like it was hard. It was just kind of like, oh, we're we're lightly casually through this dungeon. And I, I did like the fact that the the Kickstarter had all sorts of monsters. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was really cool. I would agree that the first two levels you're basically leveling up your character, but yeah. I thought the boss room was a pretty good challenge. So. Oh. There you go. But I understand what you're saying. That's my 21. I, I think it's fine. I just don't like the dice, and I, I think it pales besides a lot of other dungeon crawlers. Hmm, okay. I, the dice drive me nuts. I want to kill monsters, not dice. Yeah. Oh, I want to use dice to kill monsters. My number 21, champions admit... Oh, wait, never mind. Well, you do use word. dice. You use your own dice to kill monsters, but those monsters are dice. Dice killing dice. What could be more natural? Dice on dice death? <laughs> dice on dice violence. <laughs> 
All right, Roy. All I'm right. So confused. <laughs> My number twenty-one is a crossover with Tom, and I think also the people. This is uh, Marvel Legendary. Oh, That's right. Right. super right. hero soup, 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 deck soup. building game. I have basically everything from Marvel Legendary. I just enjoy this, and this is another game that my wife really enjoys too. And it's been fun to play with my game group, fun to play with my family. I can't wait for my kids to get big enough to play this because we're gonna play the crap out of Marvel Legendary. <laughs> it's just cool. There's so <laughs> many Stop. combos. Um, it's just cool. Are you gonna pit them against each other? No, it's a cooperative game. Okay, that's right. But uh, but it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. Favorite All expansions. Those, oh, I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy expansion. Is that weird? It's a tiny little expansion. No, that is it's a good fun, one. And that's really, that one mechanism. Of and it has the, Thanos that you can fight. And I mean, they came out have with. Have you Thanos. ever beat Thanos? Um, if you use strictly the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. You can then be Thanos because you have to have all those shards to be able to build up your strength high enough to actually hit. Right, right. But uh, you have to build the combos together. But uh, it's really yes, hard. we have. But then I tried to play some crazy mixture of all the different stuff, and it's way harder to beat him that way. Okay, good, Tom. <laughs> He's done it. But yeah, it's it's fun. And if you like the Marvel theme and you like uh, deck building, this is uh, this is the game. So good stuff. Marvel Legendary. The game, you say, well, guess what? 21 for me is The Game. That is a lie. You don't like okay, it that much. Okay, it's a lie. <laughs> you also hate that name so it's much. It's The Mind. No, it's not The Mind. <laughs> it's Pandemic <laughs> Iberia, son! Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh we're at the point list where we're going to go through 10 versions of Pandemic. Cool. Uh, yes, okay. correct. Um, you want to know how many versions of Pandemic are on my list? I want to know right now. Tell us how many versions of Pandemic are on your list. Two. Ooh. Really? So this is the only... Oh, And the what? other one was 101. That wouldn't be on the list, right? But I want to know how I can get this game since it was a limited edition. It's a limited collector's, collector's edition. edition. Here's yeah. what you do, right? You go outside, folks, and you kick a rock, <laughs> and there will be one under there. <laughs> Look under your pillow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic fairy, the pandemic fairy which is a terrible, to you. terrible thing to That's come by good. your house. Is no. this your tooth? <laughs> it's contaminated <laughs> outbreak. <laughs> Just clean it and put it back in. It's uh, glowing. Yeah, this is my. F uh, well, I can't say that. I guess. Um, <laughs> this is a great pandemic game. It's this is your favorite normal version of pandemic. The other one has legacy written at the beginning of it. It's fine. You don't know that. It's pandemic with trains. What else do you need? It is pandemic with trains. I like the long-term planning in this one. Mm -hmm. I do like the, the train aspect mm -hmm. in it. Is a neat twist where in this one you cannot travel as quickly as in most other pandemics because it's a period piece. So you will be moving around kind of slowly, generally speaking, at least through the inside of the peninsula here. But you can also invest time and build up the railroad tracks. And then, yes, you can zip around the board. Of course, for every action you take building up the railroad track, that's something you're ignoring. Mm -hmm. Do you do it and, and you know, let other places catch on fire? Do you ignore it and hope you don't need it later? When you do need it later on, it will be too late. So then start building it. It's too late at that point. So I like that, that uh, choice there, that dichotomy between, you know, spending the time and you might not need it. Uh, I also like the couple of little twists that come right in the box for this. Mm. A couple of little variants. Yeah, they're really good. They they simulate what's going on in the world very very well. This is uh, new to your list yeah. because you used to combine it with Pandemic. Sure, I I figured um, there was always a lot of garbage for like, oh, you can't put the same game twice on your list. So this is not the same game so I'm finally saying this is not the same game as other games is this your favorite train game <laughs> <laughs> maybe alrighty people's choice number 21 was 23 last year and 22 the year before that so extremely mm -hmm. straight wow. arrow and I just said the new version of it this is the original one Clank oh, oh nice. okay Clank is on the list interestingly enough I don't believe Clank in space made the the people's choice list which i thought I, I was, was odd i thought it was further back wasn't maybe it? it was uh you I know what we're talking about it i am looking at a single page here so yeah never mind it probably wasn't a list now that you come to think of it because i'm ever shouting it clank in space mm -hmm. anyway clank which is still one of the games that i see people playing 
They'll like come to the game store and I'll see people play Clank hmm. and they don't play any other games really. Yeah. That's like, oh, they found this one game. We it's call a those clankers. <laughs> <laughs> Clank heads. Clank. Clank heads. <laughs> we went and got a little Clank at the store. Hey, oh. oh. Watch it now. Oh my. <laughs> that does not sound good. That no. really does oh, sound oh. like something. <laughs> Like, you know, you walk up to me and I'm like, you want some clank? <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, the dragon's going to damage me. This game me is really playing. cool. It felt like a new breath of fresh yeah, air in the did. genre. It really did. It would have made my list, except I put Clank Legacy on. Sure, But sure. I just, I like the, the simple get in, get out, build a deck. You yeah. know, the movement plus a deck made this game a lot of fun. Very interactive deck builder also. Sure. As opposed to the other deck builders out there. Yeah. So... That's it. We're done. We almost Woo. had two hours, but we didn't. Okay, so real quick before we leave, we're not doing one tomorrow. We're coming back next week. Uh, we'll be doing on Monday, 20 through 11, and then Tuesday's the big day. Yeah. 10 through 1. Four hours <laughs> of content. <laughs> Welcome imagine? in, baby. No, no. Get the popcorn <laughs> ready, folks. <laughs> Check out our Kickstarter, DiceHourKickstarter.com. We appreciate everyone who did. Check out the new play mat that's there. All kinds of cool mm. stuff. Anyway, that's it. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Roy Canny. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun gaming. <laughs>